Comms, Jeff Cameron, Managing Editor, Ira Chauffel, and Senior Writer, Corey Clark. Your weekly dose of all things FSU, Pistols and Pies starts right now. Here's Jeff Cameron. The Seminole Headlines, 97. Ooh, I did it. First uh, uh, time this year. Man. Wow, and there's no cut. <laughs> nope, that's, for, that's, that, that's forever. That's forever more. Wow. My apologies to our friends here at 93.3 Real Talk Radio. Right. That, that tells you how comfortable you are right now. Well, no, well, last Saturday hearkened you back to winning season. Oh, winning season. Right. Yeah. When you had a lot Actually, of those I over there. I can tell you exactly what just happened. I pulled up our Seminole Headlines page on Facebook, and it was housed for a long time. We, we don't need your excuses. I'm just letting yeah, you I know. I don't want to hear them. Don't need them. And that's exactly what happened. And I looked at it and then went and then said it. You know and what? I, I blew like, it. I blew it. Hey, that's my fault. That's you, on me. I got to be better. I was going to say, you know what? I, I like got to be better. Today, just like Papuchas and special teams have got to be better. There's mm. no excuses around here. What I like that today's interview is Cam McDonald was like, I got to be better on that block. Yeah, you I do. can't let that happen. You do, again. Cam. Right. And I got to be better. He didn't tell me that, oh, well. But that's not this Well, he made a really weird move and I'd never seen it before. So really, it's just nothing I could do. The difference is Cam has missed several blocks before. Oh, this is the first mm. such mistake. Now we're deflecting. I'm just letting you know. It's not like. That comparison is completely well. Let's hope we can only go up from here, right? <laughs> <laughs> the next hour he'll do twelve seventy. Yeah. Oh, that'd be that, that would <laughs> that be rich <laughs> if our heart way back in the deep <laughs> recesses of the brain. There, yeah. Uh, and also on War Chant TV, that I got mm. right. Well that, done. Yeah, that's that's correct. Important. And you can ask questions there and all that good stuff. So there it is. Uh, we're we're officially started. Register sausage. Uh, sponsors the hour, and we love them. I didn't get that sponsors wrong. Sponsors the whole show, the whole well, kick caboodle. Yeah, that's true. Not just the title hour. sponsor. Yeah, we're. I'm stuck at the old place today. I'm just. <laughs> I'm, I'm absolutely locked in. Uh, and our thanks to Register Sausage. Yay, sausage! I tweeted Victory that sausage. I tweeted the picture, man. The I, you know, look. I'm not saying it's all seminal headlines, but the other day I went into my Publix. That's crazy. When we first started, oh, doing, that was nuts. I saw that. that I, I mean, mean, it's not nuts. It's what they all should be doing. <laughs> but, but, it's uh, sausage for days. When when we first started, when Ben started advertising with us a little over a year you ago, you might find a, single, a year ago, singular packet. Not a great no, shelf by, space. Uh, by the checkout section. aisle, yeah, probably yeah. up hey. by the candies. Hey, maybe. there's a single sausage. Yeah, Publix just was not having it, dude. They, I mean, it was like a, I've never seen so many sausage links of just red registered, registered sausage. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was, it was great. a huge uh, shelf. It's like so. taking over the whole. <laughs> so if you <laughs> live anywhere in the southeast, you don't have to worry about anything. You nope. walk in anywhere, register sausage is everywhere. And if they don't have it, I'm well, not, we're not, I was, I was we're saying not, Florida. I, no, still, the entire Southeast. Oh, okay. Florida. I mean, I've, I'm it's, looking for them in Georgia. I hadn't quite seen them pretty yet, much there. I, we're not saying violence is the answer, but you could, <laughs> there's, there's nonviolent ways to protest if you don't have registered sausage because it's delicious. It's the best sausage you can get. And, uh, the and you, we, oh, golden. And, uh, if you don't uh, have it in your area, you can, uh, order it online at registermeats.com. There, Ben is a knoll. A, a lot of Knowles work there, and uh, we need to support Register Sausage. Without question. First uh, Seminole headlines of the year after a win, boys. With a dub. Yeah. Yeah. With a, with Capital a w. dub. We just can start An right easy there. dub, too. Like, no. <laughs> oh, man. No drama at all. Who are we thinking over there, Corey? Who are we thinking to start the show? Come on now. Kevin Saldana. Thank What's you, up, Kevin? Kev? What's up, Kevin? Hey, Smooth. Appreciate you. He did want to know if the team is truly getting better. I was wondering why you were double checking. Yeah, well, he asked the question. Checking over there. He wanted to know if the team is truly getting better. You know, it's interesting. I'm not real sure. Uh, They are better in some areas. They're better than they were last year. I don't know if they've improved much from week one to week five. I mean, they have improved in some areas. Yeah, these way down, way down, third and fourth downs better this past week. This past weekend for sure. Uh, Uh, Something, something to note here. A uh, little catch-22 with the team. You know, this is the thing about that win is that it was uh, arduous, and you, and you saw all the ways that they can lose yeah. games and how they find ways to lose games, et cetera. It also reminded you that if they win games, that's how it's going to be. I mean, like, they're going to have to fight and kick and scream and claw and put – because they're just not good. I mean, they're really bad personnel. I mean, ass-sorry personnel. And they have to find a way to coach around it. And and so it's you know for that reason I'm like that's a good win any win's going to be a really good win because you blew the one that was the easy win you should have had right that's bad coaching they blew the Jacksonville State game sure that's the one that you you don't get forgiven for all that easily but you could have won all those other games as we've noted aside from Wake and uh, and even that I would make an argument about some early things there but that said um, they're in these games and man they're having to get uh, real imaginative. And and so I just wonder, you know, well, on, how, that, how, on that note, though, we've criticized coaching when it hasn't been good. Yeah, they've they've cost themselves in a couple of situations with some coaching decisions. 
the entire staff. That's a game that didn't really match up well for them. What Syracuse wanted to do defensively wasn't a great fit for what Florida State wants to do offensively. Right, right. And they had to do some things that were not what they probably want to do, but was kind of like a one-game it was a one-off. And on the other side, it did match up for him. So it was interesting because right. I thought they were going to be looking at a mirror in a weird way. It was like uh, Syracuse right. wants to run the ball. Florida State's run defense is good. You know, Florida State wants to do something on offense that they just simply can't block up and uh, not against that group. And so you're kind of like, well, quick game is going to have to be. Screens yeah. in, in quick game. Um, look, at the end of the day, they did this two weeks in a row. They had a game plan. It was evident what the game plan was, and they stuck to it. That's a good sign. It's a good sign. Mm -hmm. It's no more willy nilly yeah. throwing it against the wall stuff. Uh, I do think that the one thing that we can continue to be hypercritical of and that it, it just demands better coaching, they can't be this bad on special teams. I know it's been a story yeah. on warchant.com. I know that, Corey, you wrote about it as well. And that, uh, you know, Coach I Norvell, was livid. Well, Coach Norvell's had to own up to I mean, yeah. he can't tell everybody that that will be the backbone of so the program. So did you guys know? Uh, so right now they're ranked 87th in the country. In, well, it's one of those special teams metrics. I think it's your Fim Rao guy. Mm -hmm. Has him at 87. <laughs> that seems about right, right? 87th in the country. Maybe that seems even a little high. A little high. Guys. A little high well, I mean, but yeah. last yeah, year they, they were, much well last year they were 22nd. Yeah. Did that seem like the 22nd? That's why I edited your story. I changed your because you're in your story. You said it hasn't shown up yet. Any like development and special teams. Oh, right. I changed it to this year because oh. last year wasn't bad. No, it wasn't. I mean, they but it wasn't. Kicks. They got, I'm sure yeah, yeah I guess the that. block kicks helped. They were early in the year, but they didn't have a big, they didn't have any big returns. But then you look, Norvell's first year at Memphis, they were one in the country. His last year at Memphis, they were number two in the country in special teams by that measurement, by the FEMRAL guy. So he has proven he can get it done. I don't, I don't, again, it's, it's I odd that it's so bad this year. We're, we're doing a lot of things here where the, the personnel shows up, man. But now, I would say that beyond personnel, you're seeing some things on special teams right now. If that you would very call, disturbing. let me ask you a question. If you would caught the ball, Jeff Cameron, 18 year old Jeff Cameron. Oh, 18 year old. Okay. Not now. No, not say, what I'm, are you I'm, now? 59. I'm 50 years old okay. on the nose. Uh, yeah. If you would turn 50. Yes. Yeah. Fresh 50. Yeah. I'm a fresh 50. <laughs> not even close to 59. Um, if you had caught the ball where Jakai Douglas caught the ball on that last kickoff, like which right was, at the goal line, which was like the two. Or, no, yeah, no, he caught it, it right like at the goal line. He got to the 15, I believe, right? Where would you have gotten it? Well, if 18 year old Jeff Cameron's Turning that kick beyond the 15. Now, I you would have, have gotten, at least gotten to the 15, easily, right? You would have but, gone but, here, past but, but here's the thing because the difference would have been I've been running hard, right? Well, but and this is the thing with Jakai that kind of concerns you a little bit is more the like Jawai. Jawai, you were turning kicks like that, and this isn't just to kill that one kid. Anyone, I mean, I, I thought that was gold. The uh, would you still have an apostrophe in, the, in Jawai? Yeah, Jawai. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, the. The frustrating thing I think about that situation, I think why some fans might be extra frustrated because we saw that from him last year when he returned kicks. Mm -hmm. Like that was an issue when he returned kicks last year. So I remember asking Papuchis then, like, why is, you know, and he's like, no, no. You, why? Yeah. You, why? You know, why? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but the other thing was, and this part is on coaching to an extent, is he said that, you know, they told him if it's, if it's in the end zone to fair catch it. And the, he said that because he was around the goal line, he wasn't sure. And you, it's you like tell you, him. you could have told him, hey, man, you can catch it anywhere. anywhere inside yeah, the five, you can catch it at the nine catch and fair catch yeah, it yeah, if you yeah, want. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. yeah they <laughs> changed the rules for safety reasons. Basically, they don't want you to return kicks. The other issue <laughs> on special teams, and, and Corey brought this up yesterday, um, and when we were intervie interviewing Papuchas, is about the just how hard guys are running down on kick coverage because the one that the guy returned to the 39 that set up their last touchdown, I think, I mean, man, he caught it. I mean, he must have been five, seven yeah. yards deep. He was in, in the end zone. zone, at least halfway in the end zone. And it wasn't like he had to elude a bunch of guys yeah. inside the 20. Mm -mm. So they weren't getting down there real fast. It was almost like they were running like Janikowski was kicking off, and they knew it was just going to be in the in the back of the end zone. It, hey, was, it was bizarre. Hey, I don't normally do this, but Till Dog wants to know off the chat here, Ira, will you do a keg stand if we upset North Carolina? And I would do a keg stand back in the day. These That's days, a no. That's a these no. days, I might have to have a little help. No, but I would help you with the cake stick. Right. I right. mean, like, so we, we, I need we'll, to, it would be like, uh, I need to have some spotters. No, I got you, man. No, okay. yeah, everybody has You don't have spotters. to be a not gymnast just, to do a not, cake stand. I got you. I'm going to hold the leg. Not, Tom will get your other leg. We got you. <laughs> you tuck your shirt in. Let's do, do this do thing. Do we have to film it or can we just get verbal confirmation? Is it going to be in here? Well, no, you're going to be in North Carolina. We can do this at Ira's house afterwards. It doesn't just really matter. Just get a keg. Get a keg. Get a natty light keg. Buy Tom over and we'll all do cake stands. Not sure I'm doing that video. No. Come on, Ira. You don't want that on the internet. I dumped champagne on myself on video. You did. Or straighten you did. your eyes. Well, I've never like, done it before. Clearly. <laughs> <laughs> you're just like, first, right time I, first time I've felt 
the sting of champagne. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, so nonetheless, uh, a, maybe a keg stand's necessary. I, I'll do a keg stand if, if anybody Hey, man, if they me. beat Carolina, I want to ask you guys. I asked Aslan this on Wake Up Board Chain. It's hard to even quantify. It's hard to give an answer. Mm. We watched Jordan Travis play quarterback, and we're like, I don't, this doesn't look right. You know what I mean? For a long portion of the game, this doesn't look great. It doesn't flow. Well, he put up 33 on him. Like, you know, and, and I remember you said after the game in our in our champagne-soaked uh, celebration, like, the offense basically didn't do much the whole game, and I agreed with you. They still put well, up 33 points. it's not that they don't do much, but, man, it is a slog. It's a slog. Well, it's like it's, it's, it's two three and outs and then a huge play. Yeah. Two three and outs and a huge yeah. play. But at the end of the day, he put up you know, 28 against Notre Dame, which nobody else has done, and he put up 33 against Syracuse, which nobody else has done. With a bad offensive line and no receivers, how's it happening? What what's how does this happen? Well, I would suggest to you get ready to see some games where that doesn't happen at all, um, because we thought the easiest part of their schedule was all of these games, and and coming up you have a stretch where besides but not the UMass, defenses. It's not like you, you no, thought I mean, these defenses I, I, I were, think there's were some, awful. We still struggled to block in this game. I don't think that Syracuse team is good. Their schedule's been awful. Um, and so, you know, I, I do think you'll see them get blown out in some games later on this year. Th this game was a weird game. I really feel like Florida State could have blown Syracuse out. I know that sounds strange, but when you're up two scores oh, and yeah. you're receiving the punt and you don't fumble it on your 50 and instead catch that punt, yeah. you go down a score, you're going to win going yeah, away. Yeah, Syracuse I don't think Syracuse is very good, you know. Um, it's interesting. They do have a couple yeah, but Florida guys. Florida State doesn't do that. That's not in their DNA. Well, apparently, you can't even catch a punt. Yeah, but they, that's you know something's going to. When they but, are I mean, in control this was of the, the game. time. They controlled the entirety of the first quarter. What I what this is another area where I do think it's fair to criticize Adam Fuller and his coaching staff back into the defense in particular. When teams come out and Florida State gets stops, it doesn't take them long to go to plan two or three against that defense. And once they hit on something, they do it over and over and over again. And there doesn't seem to be an in-kind adjustment happening it real quickly. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many times are you gonna run that play action with a drag? And have that kid be wide the hell open, or he's five, just going to keep and five go, in a row, or he's just going to keep and 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 whomever's in it at the time of defensive end is going to crash and allow for him to run forty yards, fifty yards, well, whatever it might be. Not to, I mean, I'm not to defend Adam Fuller, but there's two parts to that equation. There's one is the coach has to be able to identify it and figure out a plan, and then the other side of it is the kids have to be able to adapt on the fly. Mm -hmm. And I think if your players can't. Sometimes players need halftime to have those conversations. So, like if you have older players and better players and smarter players, you might be able to make changes during the during the half. Yeah, personnel. Sometimes I don't know if you do. Personnel, and, personnel and, linebackers are terrible in the back end. They're all banged up. I got it. And there, in there that game in particular, I asked you know I asked a couple of questions about it yesterday. You know, you had that especially the touchdown late. You, know, you got Jamie Robinson, who's playing safety, which is not really the position he was brought here for and hasn't played a ton of. Because of necessity, and and uh, and then at corner, you Kevin Knowles is playing corner for his made his first start. So you have a freshman and a guy kind of playing out of position, and they have a miscommunication. That's not shocking, and that's not necessarily all on coaching. Is all I'm saying. I, I'm just noting that the back end hasn't done much oh, well yeah. all year long. Period. So that that's an area of grave concern. And then look, the linebackers aren't very good. Uh, they got two guys that they can count on to be decent. Yeah, two. And really nobody else at that position. So good news is this week, boys, before we go to break, that front four, and I mean this sincerely, should wreak havoc against North Carolina's offensive line, which has been a mess. He got, okay, sacked, good. Five, he got sacked again five times. Yeah, they time. have been a wreck up front. And so the only way you're in this game is to wreak havoc and force turnovers and get him off his spot and get him uncomfortable. Which is what they did early last Be year. Because right now i got to assume he's, he's beginning to see ghosts with the way Carolina's not blocked it up. Uh, this has been a tough year for Sam Howell. I gotta I mean, so there is a fighting chance going into this game that you can get out to a good start. And who knows what happens if they begin to grip, you know. I mean, old Max over there, like, I've never beat my alma mater. Yeah. Here we are losing at halftime. What the hell? What gives? Seminole Headlines, 933 Real Talk Radio War Chant TV continues in a moment. moment. Real Talk 93.3 wants you to win a thousand dollars. Why? Because money talks. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Your next chance to win is coming up during the Jeff Cameron Show at 2 p.m. Listen out for the keyword, then click on the Real Talk Money megaphone at realtalk93.com. Money talks. Everything else can take a walk. Money, money, I just can't get enough. 
Barry knows cool. He's keeping you comfortable. Barry knows cool. You can put him to the test. Your home has been a place of great comfort. We can help you keep it that way. Bear No Heating and Air is helping you get ready for summer with $1,500 off select new units, 0% financing for qualified buyers, plus worry free maintenance plans. Learn more or schedule online at BearNoAC.com. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Bear No Heating and Air today. For license CC 1816 Hey guys, it's Greg Tish. It's summertime, it's grilling time. But with a grill that just won't light, you're just going to end up with the summertime blues. Yeah, blues and barbecue go hand in hand. But if you get a custom outdoor kitchen built from Hearth and Patio, you'll feel like a rock star every time those flames kick on. They also sell a full line of incredible high-end grills like Fire Magic, Blaze, and Broil Master. All designed to deliver the ultimate in beauty, performance, and durability. Everything you need to elevate your grilling experience can be found at Hearth and Patio. In fact, anything related to fire can be found at Hearth and Patio. Fire pits, gas lighting, indoor and outdoor fireplaces, wood stoves, and even custom-built pizza ovens. Go see for yourself. Check out their services and products online at hearthpatiotallahassee.com. That's hearthpatiotallahassee.com. Or give them a call, 850-727-4282. That's 850-727-4282. At Hearth and Patio, they keep the home fires burning. If you weren't the owner of Gordo's and all those wonderful restaurants, Eddie, what would you be doing? You know, I, I think I'd want to be a, want to be, I don't know what I'd want to be, a boat captain or a cowboy. You know how to use a, a lasso? No. You'd have to do that if you were a cowboy. Yeah, but I've never even been on a horse. It's not my place to be on a horse. I agree. And the horse thanks you. Gordo's, bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. Hey, Tallahassee, this is Sarah with Seminole Autoglass. There's so much more to Autoglass than most people know. With the technology these days, lane departure, keep assist, forward collision, that camera is attached to your windshield. When the windshield gets replaced, it needs to be reset, and that's called recalibration. And Seminole Autoglass was the first to offer it here. We offer drop-off service or mobile service if available. Don't forget about customer service. Oh, yeah, we have the best customer service in town and a $50 gift card with your windshield through insurance. We're more than just a glass company. We are your local Autoglass experts. Better call Seminole. Hi, I'm Jeff, founder of Witch Witch Superior Sandwiches, and I'm here to tell you about our signature witch, the Wicked. Why call it the Wicked? Some say it's wicked tasty, some say it's wicked large. One thing's for sure, with oven roasted turkey, ham, pepperoni, roast beef, and bacon, as well as your choice of three cheeses, it definitely takes you from wicked hungry to wicked happy in just a few wicked good bites, only at Witch Witch Superior Sandwiches. On Wednesday, the Wicked is just five bucks. Five meats, three cheeses, five bucks. Life is stressful. Dinner shouldn't be. That motto is why Register Sausage has been doing business in the Florida Panhandle and Lower Alabama for over 75 years. A proud sponsor of Seminole Headlines, Register Sausage always provides the best southern smoked sausage to over 140 grocery stores and restaurants throughout the southeast. Headliners have discovered the Register's difference. You can too. To find a store that carries Registers near you or to buy directly, head to RegisterMeats.com. That's RegisterMeats.com. Register Sausage. Yay, sausage! Seminal Headlines returns now. Head to YouTube and search for War Chant TV today to catch the show live or on demand. Now, here's Jeff Cameron, Ira Chauffel, and Corey Clark. Yeah, so some of the uh, listeners here uh, on Seminal Headlines noting that Duke sacked him five times. Georgia Tech had a fun time against him as well. And, and talking about how right. the, 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 the linemen they lost and some of the talent they lost on the offensive line has not led to much continuity. And I haven't, I haven't watched them much this year, um, but his, George his, Tech his, took it to him. But his way. awareness wasn't great last year in the pocket. I mean, as good of a thrower as he is, I thought when Florida State started getting to him, it started affecting him. And it, I don't, I don't the, know. I mean, that, second I mean, half he got more aware, <laughs> and then well, <laughs> he started making play after yeah. play after play. And luckily, some of his guys dropped it, and uh, that saved the day for us a year ago. It is almost unimaginable that Florida State beat North Carolina a year ago. It doesn't make any sense. No. Given the team that Carolina had last year. I mean, yeah. I, you could see uh, somebody beating this Carolina team, and it wouldn't be all that stunning, uh, obviously. Uh, but, but you know, and as, as I said before the break, I do think they can go up there and play good defense against the run, and all of a sudden, let's see, you know, if uh, they start to panic a little bit. I mean, the pressure's on them to win this game. Florida State is a huge underdog. I got, uh, And again, I wish it's early in the week. As the week goes on, I'll probably – a chance to watch some more Carolina games, but I don't know what they do with that the receiver. 
He's averaging, he's got 40 catches for like 600 some yards. <laughs> he's averaging eight catches a game. And so the idea that if he's run, if he's in the slot, which I'm guessing, yeah, he's there's going to be guy. some, some tough matchups there for, yeah, if for, for struggles for to match defense. up occasionally. Yeah. There are some matchup troubles for this team moving forward. Hey, you can't throw it to him if he's on his back the whole game, Good though, point. Ira. Good you point. hear what I'm saying? You feel me? So we'll bracket that guy, and then somebody else will have a career day. Yeah, 11 for 210. Just running across the <laughs> run across the face. Here you go. Wide open, everybody. Hey, but but I don't. I the, the most stunning thing of this entire season is that defense getting essentially two straight stops to end the game. That stop to end the game was a what for stop. There is a whole lot of hooks. No, that never stop. in a million years. Nope. Nobody Sy- thought you it know, was the coming. Syracuse OC was thinking, okay, we, we got to get to the 30 for a field goal. Let's get there with 12 seconds left. Let's work this out. Babers, the same thing. I'm sure Norvell was like, all right, what am I going to, how am I going to answer the questions this week? <laughs> like, this is a wrap. All, it, it, it's mm. just for them to do that. For them, with everybody thinking, okay, this game. When when you had to punt back to them, you're like, this game's they're going to lose this game on the last play of the game again, or close to it. And then for them to get that stop, you know, I don't think it's going to get them to a bowl. It's not going to spark something like that. But that was good to see. That was good to see from a defense that hasn't done that much 100%. in five years. Just to know they could do it. Well, yeah. also, and to your point. This might strike people as odd given the way we lost to Jacksonville State, but I actually think this would have been the most disabling loss of the year. Had they had they lost that game, I don't know that we were going to see a lot of fight moving forward from this team. That might have been the straw that broke the back because I, I you know, the way that they had played in the second half, half of the Louisville game, the way that twice they had this game in hand, only to kind of give it back. And and yeah. I think that would have been at home too much to take. They I don't know that we would have seen I still think it would have been fight. second to Jacksonville State. I, but I, a understand close what second. You're, I know what you're saying there. I, I but yeah, but you also factor in the Monday the more speech, the Monday the afternoon thing, Norvell yeah. thing. I'm telling you, I I don't know. That might have been, well, it's just never gonna happen. That it could have been the, the, the mindset. It probably also would have hurt when they realized that Jacksonville State got pounded by Kennesaw State this weekend. Oh, did they? 31 to six or something like that. I mean, really struggled to move the ball against Kennesaw. That's a good Kennesaw defense. Kennesaw State secondary. Mm. Kennesaw State's number 20 in the country. Hey, in their their league. In whatever division that is. Yeah. 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 Just out of that high school realm. So, who's the Jacksonville State coach? Do we even remember his name? Jerry. Is he on he's, probably Jerry? He's been there like 10 years. Is he on the hot seat? I think he's got a lifetime contract. Oh, does that gonna say you lose to Florida State? You get shut out no, by UAB Florida or State. you beat Florida State, no, you get shut out by Florida UAB, State. you lose last week to whoever you lost to, and then you get beat down by Kennesaw State. Kennesaw State. Too, have hey, it. I, Jacksonville State for me is you too high and low. Consistency. Yeah, there's yeah. too much of this. <laughs> Schedule's a meat grinder. Yeah. Too high and low. Sean says, Can we pull a Louisville Louisville and match up against that receiver's knee? Yeah, that's uh, uh, that's one way to match it up. I'm still may- angry about that situation. I, be, you know, I was just thinking, I need to go back and watch that play. Oh, it's awful. It'll really, piss you off. Really. I mean, it will just because it stands for all that's wrong. He's completely locked in and engaged, and the kid sees it and goes straight to the knee. We're I'm talking about the Dennis Briggs in- injury, yes. and it was announced this week that he's he's going to miss the rest of the season. How about that? So he takes that hit. And then plays. Comes back and plays in the game. Yeah. And it turns out it's a season-ending injury. No, and I'm still mad about it. And and I don't know. You know What's this crazy is-, is that kid, he got a penalty, right? Yeah, yeah they call it. They call he's it. in the game. He stays in the game. Oh, yeah, but a targeting that's borderline because the full you're, speed. You're missing yeah. a whole half. Got, no, like that, that, the rules are stupid. That's crazy. Kicking like, people out of games. You, I wouldn't have any problem with kicking people out of the games for that. You know, you could get a suspension for that because that to me is straight up. Well, that's career-ending. Yeah, well, you're, I mean, you're, you're. it looks like you're trying to cause an injury. 99% of targeting is like an accident. And I, I think his intent should matter. In that there were, he didn't trip and fall into his knee. No, no, go watch it again. It's it, uh, if you dare because it'll anger you to no end. Yeah. And I have and watched that kid's it playing this week. I've watched it and I, I saw it when it happened and went, "Oh." And then saw it again and I thought, "A, I would not have been above this. I would have ordered a hit on somebody else's knee." And then B, I mean, that kid should be tossed and gone for the year. But Hey, I'm I'm a little bit of an extremist at this point, but so yeah. In the the people you guys have talked to this week, I'm, I for some reason this week I haven't talked to a lot of. Uh, FSU it's only fans. Tuesday, buddy. What what uh are people feeling any better? I don't think so. Shanna all? wasn't. Shanna texted me because Brady had a a, a 14 hour baseball tournament on Saturday. Sweet Jesus. So she didn't. That kid better make it to the bigs. <laughs> it's crazy. Good Christ. Uh, so uh, so she didn't watch the game. She didn't know anything about it. So they got home at nine o'clock and she she had it DVR and she watched it. I wasn't allowed to say anything. And I get this text at 12 15 saying, it's the same old thing. Jordan Travis is the only reason we won this game. Everything else is the same. And I'm like, well, I, 
I can't. I guess I can't really argue with you there. She's like, it's just Jordan Travis is running around. It's the only reason we won this game. And it's that's also maddening to watch. Yeah, but Syracuse's quarterback running around is the only reason they were in the game. Yeah. Well, right. It wasn't a nuanced text exchange. Yeah. But, yeah. I'm but, just saying. Like, but I. But yeah. I do. Uh, in in Stephanie it's was too at bad the game. Teams. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Stephanie was at the game with her daughter. Yeah. Yeah. And she said she walked out of the stadium and it was very subdued. Like it wasn't. I know it's relief. Right, there's a, just a feeling of relief, but that we're I not going to go winless, everybody. She I was mean, also at the Notre Dame game, and she said it was much more exciting leaving yes, that game. I sat in the even at, Notre Dame than game. even, but even leaving it after a loss. Oh, people were yes. people were much more jubilant. They were buoyed than, by what they said walking out after that game because you you thought there if they would have gone out there and hammered them, which is that's not. Happening. I mean, come on. But the de- if the defense could have built on it a lot instead of just a quarter, and then the end of the game. Then you do have a little hope, and they just—it was still—it was still a slog. You know how when you watch but a, a dub's a dub. Nah, you, you got to celebrate. It's a, it's a win. You got to celebrate a win, especially when you haven't had one in a while, or at all this year. You know when you're watching, we all watch a lot of college football, and in particular because we cover Florida State, we end up watching probably more ACC than we'd like to. Just not me. Just because if, if Florida State's not playing, I'm not watching. Well, I'm just no saying offense. if you're flipping around. Especially if you're going to be playing, especially a if team. it's on the ACC network, you definitely. Well, I know if it's on the ACC network, I'm not watching. But flipping around, I'll watch some ACC games. We watch Virginia beat Miami and things like that. You're going to watch those games. So a lot of times you'll catch yourself watching a team that either Florida State has coming up the following week or in two weeks. And this being the league that it is over the years, you've seen some pretty bad football. Mm. Like you'll go, "Ooh, they just don't have anything." I mean, and I mean this. I'm being. No jokes. You're just watching, let's say it's one of the bad years for Wake Forest because they have these weird years where they're all seniors and they're 30 years old and they're good, and then they're sucked to high heaven for two years and yeah. also they're good again. They're weird that way, right? So you're watching them like, hmm, they've got no speed at receiver. They're thin on the offensive line. That quarterback is the definition of average. They don't have anybody in the secondary that can run. When I watch Florida, it, but the amazing thing is when you see those teams and you watch them, you're like, oh, I don't know how they're going to win a game. And then, like, five weeks into the season, they do. You're like, how did so-and-so mm-hmm. lose to some that of them, team? Some of them go to bowls. But you'll go, how did you lose to that yeah. team? That's impossible. I've seen them play. Watching us, I feel that way. I, I, I'm like, how did Sarah, How does anybody lose to this team? And I'm not trying to be an ass. I look at this team, and I'm like, all they have is basically what your ex-wife said, yeah. which is, Jordan Travis run around and hope like hell something happens. But what's and crazy that is no way to live. Is, but Notre Dame, Notre Dame hasn't come close to giving up 38 points since that game. They've lost, but they've given up 26 to Toledo, and one of those was a pick six. Like they still have a very good defense. You put up 38 on them. Yeah. You know, I, how's that happen? How, well, they, well, they I mean, were able to run the ball against Notre Dame, and that was that was big. I mean, you had the two big chunk plays. You also hit a home run shot yeah. play uh, down the sideline to Chikai. Well, that, I mean, that's the thing. That's what the offense is. It's just a home run play. Yeah, you're, you're, yeah. you're, I think but they only crazy. come with the one kid at quarterback, it seems. Milton hasn't, they, they don't, Milton yeah. hasn't produced, uh, Helton dropped one, but well, the Milton biggest, hasn't that produced would have been a touchdown, the, big, a big, the big plays. The biggest problem I, to me when Milton has played is just so many tackles for loss, whether it's him getting sacked yeah. uh, or him, him not, sacking himself. <laughs> but uh, with Jordan, at least he, you know, he avoids those. Yeah. for the most part, at least in this game. Um, but, but you yeah, have no the, drop back passing game with either one of them. Yeah, it, it really is your problem. You just don't have it, right? And that was that was one of the things we really expected to see out of Jordan coming into the season. It hasn't happened. The one thing I would say about this season so far, and we talked about the games, the Jacksonville State game to me is the only egregious, egregious loss. Yes. Correct. Looking back at it now, Wake Forest obviously is a lot better than we expected, a lot better than anybody expected. Sure, Louisville's better than I expected. They lost a lot last year. And they're pretty good, man. They 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 you could make the case they could have should have beat Wake Forest. Um, so they're a better team than we expect. And Florida State's not as good because of uh, as we said, the quarterback play hasn't been better than we thought. And um, and they're beat to hell. And they're you know, yeah. Can they get? Can, uh, no, that's, is that, every that's team another, like this? No, I mean not not everybody is like this. This has been uh, secondary. Yeah. Just uh, half the guys are out every week. Uh, your your offensive line, none of them are healthy. Like they're going out there, but the, none of them are healthy. No, what are been, they doing? They've been very very unlucky. I mean, injury luck is just that. Are they in a fight club <laughs> after we don't after know about practice that we don't know about, <laughs> and they're just taking they're lead pipes to each other, wrestling? <laughs> I mean, what are they doing? <laughs> no, they they have been uh, really unfortunate when it comes to injuries, and I mean that that's just. You can never the timing of that. You never know what's going to happen. I mean, well, and if, especially if it's a cluster, and they've had a couple of clusters. That's you know? a good way to describe everything. It's one thing to get injuries. You know, you can you're going to have injuries. Yeah. But when, when when two or three happen at a position, it becomes a big deal, and that's why 
you, know, you end up you know playing some of the guys they've had to play. I mean, like, in that game last week again, this is why I'm not that I, I wouldn't judge the secondary so much on that game. And they only gave up 150 passing yards. It's not like they got shredded. But but you also had Kevin Knowles making his first start. Uh, Jamie Robinson playing a new position. Jarquez McMill McKellian was out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like when you call him McMillian. McMillian. Yeah, yeah. McClellan, McMillian. Yeah, and people yeah. were like, who the hell is that kid? <laughs> yeah, Pac Man. Who, who, who is from? that kid? Yeah. He needs to get better so we can just call him Pac Man. Did think anybody know that he was on the team? I mean, he hadn't played much. He played like four <laughs> plays, but he he actually uh, he played a lot. Made game. some flash no, plays. No, I'm too saying, early. but in that yeah. game, people, I guarantee right. you, people in the stands were like, so "Who's who, 15? Who the hell is that kid? Yeah, and so, why is he out there?" And that was kind of what I was asking for. It's like they've had so many different com combinations. I mean, Keem Dent hasn't played the last two weeks. Not that he's a superstar, but he actually Bernardo made Green some plays. didn't play. Um, it's just a weird. It's a it's just a weird group in that secondary with all the different. Keep on right. Even Corey has sustained injuries this year. When That's will a right. nightmare be over? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. It's even getting to the media. Seminal headlines. 93.3 Real Talk Radio War Chat TV continues in a moment. Your local news now. The Tallahassee Fire Department lieutenant was killed in an off-duty accident Sunday. Fire officials say Sarah Cooksey was a committed public servant. In addition to her service with the fire department, she founded the Tallahassee chapter of the nonprofit Pink Heels to support cancer patients and their families. Cooksey completed her fire certification and joined the city of Tallahassee in 2002. In 2021, Lieutenant Cooksey became TFD's public information officer, working with members of the media and connecting with the residents of Tallahassee. Florida First Lady Casey DeSantis has been diagnosed with breast cancer. Governor Ron DeSantis announced the diagnosis Monday morning, saying he was saddened to report the news. Casey DeSantis is 41 years old and the mother of two daughters, ages 3 and 18 months, along with a 3-year-old son, Mason. Casey DeSantis has launched four major initiatives since Governor DeSantis was elected, focusing on mental health and substance abuse. This is Rachel and A with your World Talk 93.3 Localness Update, brought to you by Macklemore Systems, Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at macklemoresystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Frombley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. Scattered thunderstorms likely this afternoon, otherwise overcast skies. High temperatures reach up to 79, easterly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Isolated thunderstorms likely tonight, lows around 71, cloudy skies expected. Scattered thunderstorms likely tomorrow, high temperatures reach up to 81, overcast skies. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Right now, 73. T Spark Enterprises, roofing and construction services. T Spark, T Spark Construction.com. We conquer all peaks. We fix those darn leaks. Call 850 T Spark Enterprises, roofing and construction services. T Spark. Life is under CCC 1331204. Life is stressful. Dinner shouldn't be. That motto is why Register Sausage has been doing business in the Florida Panhandle and Lower Alabama for over 75 years. A proud sponsor of Seminole Headlines, Register Sausage always provides the best Southern smoked sausage to over 140 grocery stores and restaurants throughout the Southeast. Headliners have discovered the Register's difference. You can too. To find a store that carries Registers near you or to buy directly, head to registermeats.com. That's registermeats.com. Register Sausage. Yay, sausage! Greg Tish, Real Talk 93.3. Hey everybody, this is Greg Tish. Thank you so much for listening to Real Talk 93.3. Don't forget, you can check out me and Maddie Rowe every Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. on The Greg Tish Show. Wake up with a smile at The Greg Tish Show. How's that sound, Maddie Rowe? Is that a good promo for you? That's good enough for me. Is that good? Are we it's at 30 everybody. seconds yet? Right about now. The Greg Tish Show, Monday through Friday, 6 to 9 a.m., only on Real Talk 93.3. Seminole Headlines is brought to you by Register Sausage, serving the Florida Panhandle and Lower Alabama for over 75 years. To find a store near you or to buy directly from Registers, head to registermeats.com. That's registermeats.com. Seminole Headlines returns now. Head to YouTube and search for War Chant TV today to catch the show live or on demand. Now, here's Jeff Cameron, Ira Chauffel, and Corey Clark. This is a good one to start the uh, segment with. Thank you, Jason. Appreciate you. Afternoon, gents, is what he writes. Thanks for making my Tuesday bearable go -nos. Hang in there, Jason. Thanks for the uh, contribution as well. Thank you, Jason. We should spend You're the, the man, remaining buddy. minutes of the hour just talking about Urban Meyer. Oh, I'm down with that. Is that what he asked about? No. Oh. 
but it's freaking awesome. It is incredible. And by the way, the reverse image is a glorious thing. Like the, the new images yeah. that are coming out. Because at first it looks innocuous. You're just kind of like, that's yeah, not a good look. Innocuous? I'm saying it, it's not a good look. <laughs> what? Hey, hold on. What? Hold on. His you have hands. To find innocuous for no, me. no, no. He shouldn't be where he is. That's a given. <laughs> but the one angle just looks like his hands are like uh -uh. by his cock. No, not no. Me. I looked no. like it was. Nope. I looked to me. I thought it was the okay, first angle I saw, the only still I saw was his hands were by his pockets. Now I have since seen several angles that his hands are not by his pockets at all. And uh, there's one from the side where his hands are really actively engaged. Let's put it that way. So I was thinking about how tough a spot he's in because if you're trying to get fired, that's a good way to do it. And I think he's probably trying to get fired. That way they have to pay him something. And then B, you want to do that without getting divorced and losing half your money. You're not, so that's yeah. a balance. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. Tough. <laughs> that's tough, Ira. Yeah, he might, he, he should might. have just done a line of coke or something on camera like some of the NFL coaches have done in the past. On yeah. the sideline. Uh, yeah, no, I don't think this was intentionally. You can find other ways to get fired. My point is subconsciously, this. Ira. He's wanted oh, okay. out of there well, since right. day one. Right. Look at right. him. And look at these press conferences. They're insane. I, I think it's more likely that he was just blitzed and uh, wasn't thinking and did what he probably would normally be doing. Oh, no, Not no. He's a terrible human yes. being, and he reveals it around every turn, and it's a miracle that people continue to give him jobs at TV or otherwise and act like he is What's funny some about him, unquestioned leader of men. Yeah. Is This is like number 11 on the worst things about Urban Meyer. You know what I mean? Oh, like, there there's, a there's, really... there's a lot of even worse, much worse things than this. Um, harboring <laughs> people he harbored. Uh, the, the wide receivers coach that he employed forever. Maybe Urban could teach, he used his hand skills to teach 87 how to block. Wow. <laughs> Come on, guys. Come on. Cam McDonald's a good kid. Good kid. Uh, yeah, that would have been a nice block to have. But yeah, that's, uh, I, yeah. I, it's just crazy to be Urban Meyer, to be one of, I don't know, one of the 10 most recognizable coaches in the sport and just hanging out at a, at a college bar feeling up people and not thinking. Well, the big thing is to be as famous as he is and not think for a millisecond that everybody in there is taking pictures and filming right. you. I that's mean, what I don't know. What are you what doing, has, dude? He had to have been blitzed. But even blitzed, you know who you are. Well, right? you can get to a point Especially when you're in blitzed, Ohio. then you don't really know a whole lot he, of anything. It also tells me he doesn't have any anybody well, you yeah, can call that, a real that, friend. He doesn't me, have a real friend. Right. That's No, for sure. The idea that somebody he was in there. He was by the, himself, right? It looked like. I mean, who knows? I mean, he, he didn't have a crew with him. He wasn't rolling deep with the crew like we I'm would. Saying, rolling into you got to have a guy at the moment that you realize your boy is Blotto. Be like, hey man, we got to take it on down the road. Huh? Yeah. Let's she, go. There's she can come with us. Yeah. Yeah. She can come yeah. with us, but we can't Let her leave two minutes <laughs> when later. Is, but... When is when is that interview coming? Like, how is TMZ uh, not found her? That's the that's yeah, the, that'll the, be coming the money. The money is being thrown. Yeah, yeah. it's being she's, worked out right about now. We're in negotiations right now before we get that side. Yeah, that's a man. I, I, I didn't know, like, I was not paying attention at all to the internet. I guess, was it Sunday night, or what, when was that? Or was it Saturday? I no, think it, it was, came out Saturday night, right? Saturday night. It happened night. Friday night? It happened Friday after night after a game. Thursday game. Yeah. What happened after their game? Oh, so it was Thursday night. That he just night. didn't go home. Yeah. No, that's not Thursday oh, night. Oh, yeah, you're right, right, right. Friday night. You're right. Now, right, that would have been insane. That would have been crazy. Yeah. I got right. tired of all this Steve <laughs> Yeah, you're right. Friday night. So it came out Saturday. Yeah. So, because I didn't see it, I wasn't paying attention. I thought people were just doing the typical thing. Like, you were still reveling in the victory. I was celebrating the victory. I wasn't going to get distracted by that loser, Urban Meyer. And then, secondly, I just saw his name coming up. And because he's one of the world's biggest a holes, I just assumed he said something stupid like he usually does. I didn't know that there was something much more salacious involved mm. until Sunday, really, even Monday morning. I was like, oh my goodness, this is not a good thing. You're See, gonna, you could get fired. You need to be on Twitter more. That's the answer. I can't that's, do that. yeah. that's yeah. the solution. Yep. Yeah. That's where all your answers come from. But it was a good, uh, it was a good weekend for, for Shot and Freud, man. It was a good weekend. So it started for... that way with Miami losing right off the bat. On about, a kick, on a missed uh, kick, by the way. Let's talk, let's, let's talk about that situation. So, I mean, Manny's gonna have a hard time coming back. I mean, yeah, there, sure. You know, there's there's likely gonna be a change there if they care. In Florida, so somebody posted this. I couldn't believe one it. in five in their last like six FBS five schools. Games what is that? What? They, they're one in five. In Dan Mullen's one games. in five against his last six games against Power Five teams. Now it's uh it's a good game. Well, I was gonna I say, mean, isn't that like Alabama? Yeah, yeah but that's <laughs> but it's LSU. It seems that they're supposed to be. Hey, oh, well, hold on, all right. two and four right here, baby. Two and four <laughs> sure. against Power Five teams. All right. One in five, my man. All right, well, yeah, but that's like Alabama twice, right? And in uh, who they lose to in the bowl game? Mich who they lose? They played somebody in the bowl game and lost because they didn't have half Oklahoma. their players. They didn't have half their was players. It Oklahoma, maybe or Oklahoma was State. Was it, uh, but they but but they just lost. Well, to, it's not great. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, they lost to Kentucky. 
Yeah, they're not. But that's but, not. Hey, that's not. Oh, Ken, every Kentucky is every this, thirty years or so. Yeah, Florida's going to go to Lexington and lose. Hey, man, are you are you making apologies for Dan Mullen? Yeah, what You're are you doing over here? I, I don't want. Hey, look, uh, man. I don't want karma to come back and bite us as what? we make it fun of a. It can't. We're, we're <laughs> sorry, what are you dead. talking about? We're on the ground. It's just when their first game. We're Corey. bleeding out. You're right. I mean, they haven't, they haven't been good in four years. You're right. Um, this yeah. is time to stand up to karma. My it, point, though, is that also he hates it there. They hate him. I mean, he, put his, name, like that he put his name out there for a million jobs yeah. last offseason. Mm-hmm. And now he's got a team that is not playing well. He's got the quarterback controversy. So we'll, I mean, I don't know what the odds are that he's going to be back there, but they may not be super high. And then the Manny situation, if somehow Norvell could figure out something and they could get on the I right know, track. Just, traction, there is, baby. I keep yelling about traction. There is a window <laughs> here, and that's generally what has to happen. So for, are you saying Norvell has the firmest hold on a coaching I job not, out of the three? Not saying that at all. I'm just saying uh, actually, I am. there saying is that. a window of opportunity if you can figure well, crap that's out. Well, that's what Jimbo got to do, right? right. Like that's, what, that's how he built a dynasty. Well, it wasn't a dynasty, was it? It was a very short blip. But he built nice uh, run. He built a championship team because Miami was Miami and Florida was Florida at that time. And he, and he has a sixteen them. and thirteen as a head coach at Miami. He's sixteen and thirteen. And like, so what was the guy some, before him? And the guy before him? Five. And the guy before him? Right. So the point would be they could start over. I don't know if they will. I mean, I I, I don't think Manny Diaz is a good coach, but they could want to wait one more year to find out. I guess. Um, I, Norvell's going nowhere. I actually sure. think he probably does have the best job security currently. He I, might. He's not going anywhere. Well, uh, Mullen has Mullen's the best job security, fired, but, but, it's just but he might not want to stick around. Oh, they're no, I would say him. this. Say this they're not going to fire him, but I would say this. It could make it untenable. Yeah, and, and if and if again, there are a lot of people in that athletic part that don't like him. At Powerful all, people did not want it's him. It's funny to get the, the regular Florida fans, if you will, like Dan Mullen. Right. The the upper crust Florida, the Bull Gators and the administrators, they are not fans of Dan Mullen. Because he says a bunch of do- dumb things yeah, the on the year. regular. Well, and the thing, and it was it was kind of the same way with Jimbo, right? D- for different reasons, but the people that really knew Jimbo did not like him main, mainly as a person behind the scenes. But he was winning a lot more than going one and five against right. s- six power five teams like Dan Mullen. Like you can't be that weird in that. Uh, I don't even know how to describe Dan Mullen. Just not just awkward and, and strange and bizarre. But it's not just being awkward because awkward's one thing. If you're it's awkward and also an ass in a lot yeah, of yeah, situations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, well, yeah. And I mean, then, and then not be start, an start, he, he, I think, lit a spark for the fight on the sidelines. By, oh, yeah, you know, yeah, He's yeah, done yeah. a yeah. lot he of things. He wore the stupid Darth Vader thing. He's just a goofball. And, yeah, he's hard to like. He's unlikable. And on top of that, uh, he's not winning maybe at the rate that you can get away with stuff like that. So he went 8-4 and four a year ago. But obviously, eleven and two the year before. But that. think about the talent they had on that team, man. Oh yeah, they had the a generational Tony, uh, tight end. Tight end. Yeah, yeah. Trask is a really good quarterback. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, that you know, you're not going to have a lot. There's not going to be a lot of years with a lot of better talent than that. They do have that, a freak in Anthony Richardson, who if they oh, start yeah, playing yeah. him and he's healthy, I could be a difference so maker in a lot of games. Dug in with Emory Jones. That's just a crazy thing to be dug in with. I I think I would probably start to look the other way at this point. I know he's a freshman, but that is a freak of nature that and I'm not looking forward to seeing him. Anyway. Well, maybe he'll transfer. That'd be good. Yeah. Here. The transfer here. <laughs> yeah, make that happen. <laughs> they'll, they'll run. They'll, yeah, I mean, again, we'll, we have ways to make things happen to facilitate things. Norvell will be like, look, I'll play you, man. I'll play you if you're hurt. They um the game you were asking about, they lost the cotton bowl last year. Um and before that and, and so anyhow the point is that they were eleven and two, six and two in conference the year before that under Dan Mullen. 10 and 3 the year before that, 5 and 3 in the conference. Second place, second place. And then. So he's won 29 games in three years? He is. Yeah, if you count bowls, he's 32 and 11. All right. He, 32 he, and 11 is, is pretty good. It's okay. Pretty good, especially where he took over from. Um, it's, you know, well, they weren't at the bottom when he got there. No, but they were. They had just fired their second coach in four years. He's 32 and 11. I'm, let's not make that sound like that's elite. All right, he's he's and averaging. You're comparing it to Florida State. Yeah, well, I mean, absolutely. Yeah. No, that's what you're doing. You're yeah. Kind of, yeah, I mean, he's he's losing them a little over three games a year. That's not great. You're at Florida, dude. It's what it's what uh now I mean, if we, now, doing. If we, that, now if that we was, could get there, that'd be nice. I, I'm not arguing say, that. I, I, but but that was, let's not do the complaint. But that was the, the point Jeff used to make at the time when Jimbo was losing three games a year. It's like, man, this, this I used to crush Jimbo for that. I'm like, what are we doing out here losing three games? Remember, I used to tell him. It could be worse. That's great. Well, no, he's like, if he keeps losing three games a year, he won't have a job. I'm like, well, that's not true. 
He can go ten and three in perpetuity. No, you can't, can't fire a ten and three coach forever. Nonsense. I mean, if he goes ten and three forever, you can't fire him. Sure, you could. You could fire him very easily, especially it depends on who the losses are to. I do think also it if you're becomes a, if the, you're in a school who expects championships. Sorry, Ira. Right. Um, at some point, especially if you've won a championship, which he had, and you're recruiting at a championship level, which prior to him giving up, he had been. You can't go out there. That's why so Mark Kirk, Rick got fired. Well, no, Mark Rick had some six and seven years and Come some eight on, and five years. That wasn't ten and three throughout. I'm saying if Kirby. Kirby could lose a couple times this year. He's not on the hot seat. A couple no, times he's next year, he's the, on the hot seat. No, no, a couple. If, if he goes 10-3 and three with those recruiting classes over the next three years, they're going to want to fire him. They might want to, but it ain't happening. They should fire him. <laughs> they should yeah. fire his ass. <laughs> I don't if, like if, what I'm seeing out I, of that crew. I'm going to tell you something. You can't lose three games a year. Those recruiting classes to Georgia are insane. Well, hey, man. That's why we're looking it's at It's hard them. to win college football games. It's hard to win college football not games. Not when you have better players every week. I mean, Mark Ricks. Yeah, man, it wasn't. I mean, dude, it wasn't what Kirby's doing. I mean, you said he's had some five and six wins. I mean, he, you know, the last year he was there was nine and three, ten and three before that, eight and five before that, twelve and two, ten and four. Yeah, then, man. but back five, six years before there was a six and seven, right? Uh, but two years before that it was ten and three, eleven and two. But I mean, the year he got forced out, he was nine and three. Yeah, well, it turned out to be the a, year before. Seemed that. like it turned out to be a good decision. I'm we'll saying you can fire it. ten and three coaches easily. Well, right. If expectations my, are that you win a national championship and you have the number one or two recruiting class every single season and you go out and lose three games a year, no, man. I feel like now we've lived through what we've lived through the last no, five years. No, you're lowering. I, I'm just telling I, you, I, they have been lowered. No. If Mike Norvell went 10-3 and three for seven straight years, he is not getting fired. But things mm. change. Your perspective changes at that point. Yeah. We'll be mad. We'll be like, this it is crazy. How about, on how about the, breaking what if, through? What if every year those two of the three losses are to Miami and Florida? That means you're crushing the ACC. Oh, man, get the hell out of here with <laughs> that. You're beating Pitt. That means you're, you're losing to Clemson, game. and then you're losing to Miami and Florida. The three. No, nah, really you beat Clemson. He might own Clemson. Oh, we don't know. He never gets to play them. Seminole Headlines, 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV continues in a moment. There's fun to be had every night at the Corner Pocket. Take home prizes on Trivia Tuesdays and Beer Bingo Thursdays. And kickstart your weekend with Martini Fridays. Plus, happy hour runs every weekday and game day specials every time the Knolls take the field. Watch all the best games at the Corner Pocket's Vegas Wall. Featuring 560 inches of flat screen TV heaven. Oh, really? The best food, the best drinks, and the best place to watch all the games. Tallahassee loves the Corner Pocket. When you need a plumber quick, how long is an acceptable time to have to wait? Uh, yeah, hey, it's the Millers again. I'm uh, just calling you about our little plumbing problem. Two hours? Hey, uh, we were hoping you can get here soon because the water is getting really bad. I mean, it's... Please hurry. Four hours? I know you said you were on your way, but, uh, honey, tell the kids to drink water. Eight hours? Don't worry about us. We're fine. At m &L Plumbing, you'll never have to wait long for quality, dependable service right when you need it. At m &L Plumbing, we listen to our customers and our qualified technicians aim to achieve 100% customer satisfaction. So the next time you need plumbing work or repairs, think of the name m &L Plumbing, your local plumbing experts, commercial or residential. Give us a call, 850-575-9393, or visit us online at mnlplumbing.com. m and Plumbing, for all of your plumbing needs. This is Dr. James Ryan Finn with Finn Chiropractic, encouraging you to unmask the cause of your problem. People mask problems with medicine, even with stretching or massage. But if the cause of your problem is pressure on your nerve, you need to unmask that cause. That's what we do at Finn Chiropractic. So if you or a loved one are having neck pain, back pain, or headaches, come in, get the phenomenal health exam, and let us unmask the cause of your problem. Remember, chiropractor loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Hi, this is Justin Colvin, founder of the Medicare Help Desk. I routinely speak to seniors who are overwhelmed by the multitude of coverage options available to them. That's why I created the Medicare Help Desk radio show. Tune in every Sunday at 1130 a.m. where I provide clear answers to all your questions about Medicare. Is your business interested in exploring safe, secure, remote access capabilities for your employees? Not sure whether to go with a Mac or with a Windows system? Call the folks at Mac and More Systems and they can give you the guidance to make the best decision for your needs. Visit MacandMoreSystems.com today. 
Many orthodontists in Tallahassee can straighten a smile, but at Birch Orthodontics, they're dedicated to providing the finest care possible. The experienced and friendly staff is trained in all of the latest techniques. So whether you need standard treatment like braces or Invisalign, or you have a more complicated case requiring extra attention, Birch Orthodontics is here for you. Set up your free consultation today by visiting birchorthodontics.com, B-U-R-C-H orthodontics.com, or call 850-877-1692. At Birch Orthodontics, they create beautiful smiles that last a lifetime. Seminal Headlines returns now. Head to YouTube and search for War Chant TV today to catch the show live or on demand. Now, here's Jeff Cameron, Ira Chofel, and Corey Clark. Two things can be true at the same time, my friend. I desperately want a 10 and 3 season. Okay. I'd right. like to cover a 10 and 3 We have covered yes. 10 and 3 seasons. I'd like to do it we again. We did not appreciate them in the moment. I but we, how could well, we? we well, just, that, they're they're not all built the same That's way. That's what I was going to say. They're, they're not all, all built the if same way. Again, to the point he made before, and I'm not trying to continue the argument, we can move on. But like if you're 10 and 3 and your three losses are against the really good teams, it's not a lot of fun. Man. Especially if you've got better players every week. Mm. You can't just, I mean, look. It's one thing to lose a bunch of games with this sorry crop of kids that we got playing this year. No but offense. If, I mean, good kids, I'm sure. But if you <laughs> if you have the better players week in and week out, and then the one or two or three times you play somebody that has players akin to yours, you lose. Do that three years in a row and see how quickly people get ready to fire a coach. I'm not arguing that. I'm saying that you could be ready for him to go. That does not mean that they, the decision makers can be like, that's enough. That's eight losses in three years. We can do better. That just... At, in the modern era of college football, I, I think depending I don't on see what the happening. budget is for football, what the expectations are for football, and what the talent level is that you have. Because what 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 does happen, and again, not that Jimbo was nowhere near in the uh, going to get fired at any point before he's he, about to lose his third out. row. But but what I was going to say though is that that you could see the attendance. Those they 2014 they sold out season tickets. Yeah, from 2015 through 2017 is last year. Attendance got worse and worse and worse. I mean, the it, season tickets went down. Attendance went down. Fans are challenging. To Imagine fight. if they had gone back the next year to 2018. Oh, no. Again, he challenged the fan to the fight. All I'm saying is people were felt strong enough about him <laughs> to yell down to him. <laughs> right, yeah, from the fans, the field. Yeah. Yeah, fire yeah, coaches. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, if you go into the next year, what was season ticket sales? You know what I'm saying? Could. So it's just, it's not, I get what you're saying. They wouldn't, it wouldn't merit firing, but, but a situation gets stale. Yeah. And then it leads to other issues. Mm hmm. Yeah. And and it's at very few places where that's even possible. I like if, if you think that's possible here now. If not, Norvell gets this right thing back, now. No, of course not right now. Do you think it's possible at Florida State in the next ten years if Norvell gets this thing going that people will turn on him if he goes ten and three for four years in a row? If, He'll if, get this place to a point. Perspective changes. Yeah, man, I could see. Uh, it and, and again, who you even lose with to, the again, even with what but, we know now because yes. we had never lived through this. He was saying stuff in 2016 that yeah. he didn't, you you had no idea in 16. How could any of us? That they would go in a four no, and twelve but, street, but I knew that that was untenable. What was happening was no, untenable. But my point, no, I'm not talking about Jimbo. I'm talking about you saying keep losing three games a year and they'll get rid of you. That was in six. That was 2016. Jeff Cameron. Talking. Yes, yes. 2029. No, Jeff Cameron talking. No, no, because you I live that through this now. So, so I'm supposed to be just forever grateful that we can win ten games again at Florida State. Well, I'll well, be grateful when it happens for the first time in forever, because thank God it means we've turned it back around and now we can have legitimate expectations of winning a conference championship and playing in the college football playoff, which at this school is ultimately the standard. Right. Now, it's not the standard at Wake Forest. They're not going to fire. It's not the standard at Miami no, anymore. No, no. I don't want to get to a point where if we win 10 games, that is to be celebrated in a way that means you can never be questioned. Like, that's it. You just go ahead and win 10 games every year, and we'll never question you I again. Think, I don't even know what we're arguing about. You're saying never be questioned. Of course you'd question it. I'm saying you're and not going to fire somebody that wins 10 games a year, five straight years. You're just not. Not at Florida yep. State. Yep. Not now. Yep. Not after we've lived through this abyss of despair so you and believe, loneliness. You, you believe, it's, it's tumbleweed you believe rolling around. Us. This stretch has, has means for you it's forever Florida altered. State in perpetuity cannot no, no, no. be an elite program. No. And I'm should saying, not aspire to be one. That's not what I'm you saying. You are. What the hell? You might as well just go nine and three, nine and ten and three, whatever. But just because somebody's gone ten and three three years in a row doesn't mean they can't go thirteen and zero the next year. If if somebody goes seven years in a row in your example, it does. They're not winning well, thirteen sure, games. Right, maybe but seven <laughs> years in a row. I'm telling you, so I'm that's, done guessing that's the thirteen. The <laughs> well, you threw seven out there. I mean, yeah, that's that's fair. I'm saying if if 
if he gets it to a point where he's winning 10 games consistently, three or four years in a row. Oh, yeah, no, that'd be great. I'd like to get there, yes, especially from where we sit currently. By Agreed. year six, you'd be like, all right, Mike, can we take the next step? Yeah. Have you gotten us to yes, this Yes, I'm saying there is a time and place where you would begin to question like whether Like there is not. with uh, Leonard Hamilton. <laughs> like, you know he can get you to the Sweet 16, but maybe you need somebody else to get him to the Final Four. And also, this is more nuanced than we're And is this going to happen at A&M, by the way? Are they having these conversations oh, at A&M right now? Oh, they ought to be. They're, they're, they're furious. They're, I mean, are they, they really? I've been on their boards. Yeah, they're furious. How could they not be? Well, that was that hey, was his bad. Oh, worry sorry. About, let's that was argue a bad during loss. the break. Hour number two, fourth coming. Hang it. Thousand dollars. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? It's time to win some cash. And here's this hour's keyword. Hey. P-A-Y. Hey. Click on the Real Talk Money Megaphone at Realtalk93.com to enter the keyword for your chance to win one thousand dollars in this nationwide contest. Money talks. Everything else can take a walk. Money, money, I just can't get enough. Coming up next, more of the Jeff Cameron Show, live and local on Real Talk 93.3, WVFT, Greta Tallahassee. Breaking news this hour from townhall.com. I'm John Scott. A former Facebook data scientist has told Congress that the social network giant's products harm children and fuel polarization in the U.S., but that its executives refuse to make needed changes because they elevate profits over safety. Whistleblower Francis Haugen appeared for a hearing by the Senate Commerce Subcommittee on Consumer Protection earlier today. Democrats confronting narrowing voter registration advantages in key battleground states ahead of next year's midterm elections. And that's stirring concern among some party members of a coming Republican wave in 2022. Bernie Bennett has more. In Pennsylvania, Democrats now lead Republicans in voter registration by about 632,000 people down from 813,000 two years ago. The same is true in another battleground state, North Carolina, where Democrats' advantage have shrunk by more than 140,000 since October 2019. The situation is most dire for Democrats in Florida, the nation's largest and most volatile swing state. The party has long held a yawning voter registration advantage over Republicans, but it has shrunk by more than 200,000 people over the past two years. Bernie Bennett reporting. Also at townhall.com, on the international front, Taiwan's president has raised concerns about China's increasing belligerence toward the island. President Tsai said Taiwan did not seek military confrontation, but would do whatever it took to defend itself. She blames the heightened tension squarely on Beijing, warning of a threat to Taiwan's democracy and appeal to the international community to help Taiwan. But critics say her pursuit of formal independence for Taiwan is at least partly responsible. Any conflict across Taiwan Strait could potentially drag the U.S. and other countries into a catastrophic regional or world war. BBC correspondent Cindy Sue reporting. More on these stories at townhall.com. One listener that stands out that I worked with was this older couple that was interested in refinancing. They reached out to a few different lenders and, you know, their credit wasn't the best. I know some of these other bigger banks, you just won't hear back from them, which I cannot stand. Not everybody has the 780 credit scores. And just because you don't qualify at one time doesn't mean that you'll never qualify. I'll walk you through what you have to do, whether it's two, three, six months from now. Back to that older couple, we worked with them for months and months to improve their credit. And we were able to get the loan done. We were saving them hundreds each month, thousands of dollars a year, finally got themselves into a situation financially that they can handle and they could start saving money each month for retirement. End of the day, they just could not be happier, which just put a huge smile on my face. We are United, United Faith Mortgage. Mortgage. United Faith Mortgage is a DBA of United Mortgage Corp. 25 Metal Park Road, Metal, New York. Licensed mortgage banker. For all licensing information, go to Animalist Consumer Access. Or corporate Animalist number 1330. Equal housing lender. Licensed in Alaska, Hawaii, Georgia, Massachusetts, North Dakota, South Dakota, or Utah. If you weren't the owner of Gordo's and all those wonderful restaurants, Eddie, what would you be doing? You know, I, I think I'd want to be a want to be, I don't know what I'd want to be, a boat captain or a cowboy. You know how to use a, a lasso? 
No. You'd have to do that if you were a cowboy. Yeah, but I've never even been on a horse. It's not my place to be on a horse. I agree. And the horse thanks you. Gordo's bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. Ah, these recruiting updates are nothing but fluff. Are you wasting your time again on free blogs and social media to get the scoop on FSU recruiting? Yeah, it's all bait and switch. You're on warchant.com. What's really going on with FSU recruiting? Could be another top five class. But for the real scoop, you'll need to get your own Warchant subscription. What's it cost? Free. There's a 30-day trial offer. Just sign up and you'll get full access through signing day. And nobody has more accurate and and timely information than warchant.com. You know I like free. Sign me up. Warchant.com, your, your ultimate, ultimate Seminole source. source. Seminole Headlines is brought to you by Register Sausage, serving the Florida Panhandle and Lower Alabama for over 75 years. To find a store near you or to buy directly from Registers, head to registermeats.com. That's registermeats.com. It's time for Seminole Headlines, featuring Warchant.com's Jeff Cameron, Managing Editor Ira Chauffel, and Senior Writer Corey Clark. Your weekly dose of all things FSU, Pistols and Pies, starts right now. Here's Jeff Cameron. Hour number two, Seminole Headlines, 93.3 Real Talk Radio, Warchant TV. I made everybody nervous now. Not me. I nah, knew, you I knew, know. You're you know. Everybody's like, oh, you're man. Good. You know where you work. Does he get it? Okay, good job. Good job. We're good. Uh, I know that Birch Orthodontics sponsors this hour, and she is uh, the ride and die orthodontist that sponsors this show. And uh, is you know, she's a warrior to deal with uh, being a part of this big cluster <laughs> rebuild. Yeah, rebuild, rebuild, rebuild. <laughs> rebuild. And, yeah, it's uh, it's tough, but she's unwavering. I feel like I need to uh, need to buy her something because <laughs> I think before she's doing the season, okay. you can buy her before, anything before the season. You know, I told her I, you know, there were a couple of players I, I told her I really believed in. Oh, maybe could turn the corner, and it hadn't really happened for those. Well, give her some players. flowers. And uh, I will say uh, this: we've had a lot, of, and we don't want to overlook uh, Birch Orthodontics. Go ahead and tell everybody how they can go get their kids' teeth fixed at or- Birch Orthodontics. Mine, yours, all of, yeah, all three of my kids went there. Have beautiful smiles. Both really, my boys to, are uh, there to uh, as testimonials. Uh, Birch, Ortho- Birch Orthodontics dot com is the website. Uh, they do a tremendous job, not only tremendous work uh for your teeth and your kids teeth but also just great customer service they have payment plans they'll have free consultations you can come by and they'll uh, evaluate your situation every situation is different they take time with it and they treat you like family could not speak highly any more highly that's correct than we right. do about birch orthodontics so uh patronize them and she's a knoll and, through oh, and through huge huge yeah. knoll and uh has higher expectations than most she's she might be the one that would she's fire a, a oh, 10 and 3 coach well, she, at me She'd and her we, we th- did th- that them. day yeah, we're like, okay, I'm about done with this. So we do it around here. <laughs> Trying to win some damn football games. Uh, no, so it's a more nuanced discussion than perhaps Corey and I got into, but we can't belabor this point anymore. No, it's we, fine. It's we figured fine. it I out. We, we patched agreed. it together yeah. during the break. We've got it all figured out. Brought up some other examples where some 10 win coaches got fired. I like it. We've seen him sneak, sneak in a little right, later. Right, and, and I guess we're not my, keep my, my response this, to me, yeah, is, yeah. how are those programs doing since? How's Nebraska doing since that the firing of? Well, I would say that Alabama's intolerance for mediocrity worked out. I would say that there are plenty of Who places. Fire that was ten and winning. Nobody, I'm saying, I'm <laughs> saying, it, it wouldn't have mattered. If they, they're not having it forevermore. Hey, by the way, don't let Nick win ten, yeah. ten games. <laughs> That's happened already, and they complain. <laughs> Can you imagine them losing like three games a year for the next four years? People would be like, "This he's passed him by." He's lost it. Yeah, it'd be the lead on yeah. a lot of shows around that area, and maybe they'd be right. This point. guy, if he wins ten games in the next three oh, years at any point, there might be a statue. He's winning coach of the year. Put a statue. I'll build a statue of him. <laughs> if they actually, what's the amount of time we think it'll take for him to win ten games here? It the I mean at least the two earliest years. The earliest would be two years the earliest would be not so it's obviously not this year and it's not next yeah, year. I think it'd be it'd be the they do it this year if they went out? <laughs> no, they'd have to get to the ACC championship game and then and to a then ball, and a I don't ball. think they can do it. That's why that Louisville loss hurt so much. <laughs> it took them out of really the running of the eight for the ACC champion. The, uh, right. You know, here's a good one from Jimbo last week. Again, I was telling Corey before. I like to watch coaches press conferences after they lose. It's Me a little too. twisted, but you know, <laughs> yeah, it is. But I was watching Jimbo's the other day, and he was talking about the week before when they lost. Uh, he said, "Look, all of our goals are still ahead of us. Yeah, we can still accomplish all the things we wanted to do. This doesn't change anything." So then they lose at home to lose. Mississippi State. <laughs> so then somebody goes, "Last week you said that all your goals were still ahead of you," and he goes, "I don't worry about goals during the season. That's just talk. That's just talk. I'm not worried about that. Well, you said <laughs> it. You, you said it last week. Seven days yeah, yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet the guy didn't come back. And No, I think they moved on to somebody else. Yeah. Anyway. 
that's a toughie that lost last week at home. That, the Mississippi um, State and yeah. that offense. Yeah. That, was, that coach. That was that. I guarantee you, Mike Leach doesn't work as many hours as Jimbo does. Oh, that, not a third. I think I must have watched some of it or seen something on Twitter about Jimbo talking, not glowingly about his two million dollar year defensive coordinator. Um, yeah, yeah, he kind of. Somebody asked, "Were you guys playing?" Elko. Somebody asked, "Were you guys playing too soft?" Yeah, and he said, "Yeah," but and then he kind of his first response was kind of like, "Yeah." And, it it ain't went. like he did great, but also Jimbo, you put up you score two touchdowns, points. bud. Uh, Christopher writes, "If FSU upsets the Tar Heels." Will we get a pantless Jeff Cameron running down Tennessee Street while holding a suck at Tar Heel sign? And if so, can Warchamp film this glorious act? Uh, well, I'd be I don't, arrested for that. I would get arrested for that. I don't feel like getting arrested. And also, I don't think North Carolina doesn't warrant that. No. Yeah. No, we're no not, that's fair. Yeah. I, if, if they do that with Clemson, even this Clemson team, which is by far the worst in a while for yeah. Dabo, I don't. I think maybe this Clemson team warrants it. I think, My, and I, I think people I, need to realize that, you know, the champagne bath was a one-time thing because they're zero and four. Right, like we're not going to up the ante every time they get a win. Yeah, we're not. We're not going to be bathing each other next week. <laughs> uh, Jay writes, "I'm feeling two interceptions for our defensive backfield in the upcoming UNC game. What say you, Ira, Jeff, and Corey? Will Register Sausage do a you pick two special for that ass? Wow! If they get two picks of sure. I I, I mean we haven't talked to Ben. For- I'm going to speak for Ben and say yeah." Sure. Ben replied, I oh. like where this is headed. Maybe 10% for every INT so long as we win. Okay. Okay. Now there you go, Ben. Hey, 10 interceptions, and you're talking about free sauce. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so take. Greg wants to know what's wrong with Clemson. Their offensive line is terrible. I talked about it before the Georgia game, and it's just gotten worse as the season's gone on. That's that led quarterback is But that's least... led to some problems. Well, the, the two correlate, yeah, my the, friend. Yeah. Bad quarterback play seems to coincide often with poor offensive line. But it was so good or being rendered one dimensional. But great quarterback play can alleviate a little bit of your issues with alleviate the O line. And he does not look like he's no. all that great. Well, I think he got shook early. Yeah, yeah that it's and a then tough I'll, defense to face to start out. No, <laughs> no, nobody ever talks about losing ATN. I mean, like he was a, a really good phenomenal player. running back. I mean, he was just like a very good running back. He was a phenomenal. They also threw back. him the ball a lot last year because the offensive line was starting to show cracks in the armor then and then coming into this season i remember doing all these season previews for the college sports book stuff i'm looking at their offensive line and i was reading what some of their local guys were writing about it and then i'd go back and look and i'm like this doesn't look like a championship offensive line they're having to slide a freshman inside and i was looking at all these numbers it's like i don't know and then they've gotten their ass torched and now he's starting to get some heat because he doesn't go to the transfer portal Mm. he he, refuses he won't go so how do you fix that you Mm. just if you're playing freshman you can't really fix that quickly uh, Don't let him win 10 games. Yeah, man. that would. Well, how about that? Uh, Panama Noel wants to know, do we honestly think there is no athletes on this team that can run full speed on a kickoff return? Something seems off. Can we get special teams some pregame pie, urban style? <laughs> I'm not sure that that's the answer. <laughs> yeah, but I no, And that's why I asked him what I asked him yesterday. I'm sure you didn't watch it, but you should have. It was an enlightening. We don't ever ask Papuchas anything when he comes. Like he, I try. Usually. Ira does. Ira will ask five of the six questions when it's papuchas, but they last four minutes. But this one was 15 minutes because people had some things to get off their chest. Well, they're chest. a little worried about the, uh, yeah. the, the special teams units. Yeah. But, like, how do you determine who's even good at kick returning when you don't ever tackle them in practice? Like, how do you know who hits a hole hard when there's real contact on the line? Or when they're jogging. Um, and Because I'm sure, there's no way Jawai does that in practice. <laughs> That's, it's going to catch on, guys. Yeah. Much like the Sean gone. Yeah, to his point, and I actually asked him about this like a month ago. Because it's what crazy they, how he they, runs back a kickoff. Oh, and the way, well, and the way they practice it, I mean, we all know that that's an extremely violent portion of the game. Yeah. That they're trying to legislate to They be less basically violent. have, yeah. That's why and, they let you call for the fair catch. But in practice, you never, ever practice your best coverage unit against your bench return Nor unit. should you. Nor should you. Right. But the problem is you 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 don't get to see maybe what What was they his answer? Do. Uh, when I he asked, said it was a good question. He asked when I asked my question. He's like, "That's a good question," but I think he did it like that's a ridiculous question. But oh, yeah, this is what I say when it's a ridiculous you. question. Yeah, he was patronizing. Yeah. There's not a whole lot. I mean, he said what basically what they do is they pick guys who are good in other situations. You've seen them how they respond. This guy runs fast normally, and and is yeah. explosive. Can make a guy miss. Yeah. You know that's why they reason. The, that was the reason they put Pokey Wilson punt returner because he usually has mm, that move mm. to make a guy. But the problem is he didn't have the ball when he made that. Yeah, move. you got to catch it. Yeah. Got to catch. It. That's big first, deal. first things yeah, first. Always got to catch. It. But I, I would be very surprised if twenty two uh, returns another kick at Florida. State. One little thing about the kick coming down on kick coverage because I think the question was about kick coverage. <clears throat> That's been bad too. But one one thing he did say was all eleven guys. And I think it's important to note 
that all 11 guys are not supposed to be running full speed, that there are kind of layers to it. Like the first seven guys are running full speed, and the next three are kind of theoretically, like, they're supposed to be running full speed. Theoretically, I think in that, again, in the 30, 39 yard routine. That's what I I'm, kid, I'm, I guarantee you they told that Syracuse kid, man, no matter where you catch it, take it out because they're not running. They're at the 35 when you catch it. So, so go. Michael, I like your question. I've answered some Twitter questions already. Going back to some Facebook questions here. Just trying to show the balance. Mm, we good. appreciate that balance. Okay. Week five state champs. Hang that plaque in the smokers lounge at Doak right next to the top 200 defense <laughs> plaque. Has anyone considered Urban hired her to bring on a heart attack? Guy beneath him, Brent writes, got to hand it to old Urban Meyer. Even though the Jags are 0-4, he just keeps grinding. Oh, <laughs> oh <boy>. wow. <laughs> Top guys, 200 defense. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. they're a top 80 defense right now. Top 80. I think they're um, they're 77. When did we say we we're going to ha- hang the plaque in the Smokers' I Lounge? I, I thought we, we said top 40. 40 is what we yeah. wanted. So we still got a year. Ooh, we got a ways. Yeah, we got a year at least mm. to get But to they top did 40. win the weekend. Oh, no, but without question. UCF lost because as I, I – and by the way, I bring that up because two weeks ago I ripped uh, the coach. Malzahn. Malzahn because he's a clown. And the guy, there was a UCF guy who got all upset with me. But here you go, buddy. It's starting. It's happening. Get ready. It's off a cliff for them, as long as that clown's there. But that said, UF loses. Miami loses. That's a glorious moment. Willie won. Sent Butch Over Davis FI. in retirement. Over FI. Barely. Was a big win. Um, yeah, but uh, Florida State did win the weekend. That was good. It was a, it was a good day. The in the Bucks. In the Bucks won too. Yeah. Congrats. I'm not inexplicably. I thought that entire game they were going to lose. Even when they were winning, I thought they were going to lose. Champions find a way. Ira, you know that. It's in their blood. Really nice. It's in their blood. Worried about that. It's just what they do. It's magic. Uh, Mike writes, do you guys think Norvell brought in Dillingham and Fuller for their loyalty and grit rather than their abilities as coordinators? Maybe he realized he needed a loss. Uh, I'm going to skip all that. Here, here's the deal. Well, no, look, there's he, no he, way that you would do that because if no. they're terrible, you could lose your job. Yeah, this is his one shot at a place like this. So you don't do it just because they're friends or you, mm-hmm. you, you, you trust them. And in fact, he tried to get Lanning at Georgia, um, so it wasn't like Fuller was his first choice. I think Dillingham was always going to be his guy, uh, and I think that's just because they worked well together. I don't think that's like and they did we're, good we're, things together. Golf they were, yeah, yeah, um, they have worked really well together in the past. It's just not hasn't totally clicked. I think I'm fair in saying that they're like the personnel. It hasn't totally clicked yet here at Florida State. Um, but Fuller was the one we we questioned even back then. Like this was a you went from Dan Lanning. Um, the the defensive coordinator at Georgia that going a, after him. That was a really lofty goal. I sure. really like the effort. Well, he there. knew him. I mean, they had, yeah, he had yeah, a history with him, him, so he knew him to go from him to uh, Adam Fuller, who's you know maybe resume isn't quite Dan Lanning's. Uh, that was a was a pretty precipitous drop to option two. Or we well, I don't know. It could have been option nine for all we know. But jury's still out, guys. Jury's still out. Adam Fuller's coming off a dub. And you got to stop when it mattered. Definitely, we've got a uh, special teams question here um, in the. Folks wanting to know, like, come on, man, what's going on with that? We pretty well addressed this. Um, it, it is something that can't continue to suck, as, addre- as addressed this week by Norvell, who said that that can't continue to happen. And it that has to really eat at him because he has gone out of his way to preach it. Well, the thing is, and you know, and he, man, during preseason, and he talked about it when he got hired, he talked about how basically everywhere he's been, they've returned kicks for touchdowns. And it was something he talked about in preseason camp. You, during practice, he was tell- you could hear him telling guys, we're going to return one for a touchdown. We're going to we're going to break some kicks, and it's not even close. Part you think of it Jekai is hurt them. Part of it is they don't have they don't have special return guys. I mean, they thought Travis Jay was going to be their main guy. He's always hurt or hasn't been available very much. And even when he was out there, it wasn't like he was close to breaking one. So even if the blocking is there, it's hard to tell because the guys returning kicks have not looked good. My, and Corey Rent when he was doing it would just kind of run into traffic. He had one out to the forty. I think he did have one out. To but the 40. uh, but uh. My problem is that it wasn't like that last return by Ja'Kai Douglas was the only time he looked like he did not want any part of it. Oh, like, I agree. So why then is he still at that? You have Corbin yeah. back there, too. Why not flip him? At least Corbin, you know, if, if, if you're going to put Corbin out on a kick return, why are you putting him as the other guy instead of the main? You, you know, the guy on well, the left. Do choose that or does the kicker choose that? Well, I think the kickers always kick it to the left because that's how they kick it. The, you don't see many kick to the right. They usually, yeah. when they're booming it, they're trying to boom it to the left. Um, so... So why why not flip them? Why after the first right. return you're like okay Jakai that that was not any that, good. That's we're not, not what we're that. looking for, Jakai. And, and especially after the second one, but the third one is thirty to thirty, and you still put them back there, yeah. so we could look even worse. Tyler writes, did y'all catch that Dan Mullen mm-hmm. press conference on Monday? Feels like that marriage might be fizzling a little bit between him and Manny. Maybe there's still hope for us yet. Yeah, it's what you, you made last hour. Yeah, windows opening, Mike. 
Make it happen. Get some of those recruits, damn it, especially at linebacker. Good Lord. There's a couple guys committed to Miami and Florida that, you know. Hey. <laughs> hey, nothing <laughs> signed, is it? Hey, let's get to some of the headlines. 93.3 Real Talk Radio War Chant TV continues in a moment. Hi, it's Chris Kraft. You want luxury that speaks to you? If you want a car that exudes class? Then come into Infinity of Tallahassee and reserve your very own all-new 2022 QX60. It's sleek and it's sexy. Where state of the art meets real life. Pitch and slide second row seats offer easy access to the third row or cargo, even when a child seat is involved. Google it, you'll see. That's real life, and that's the all new Infinity QX60. Come get yours. Infinity of Tallahassee, next to Kraft Nissan on Mayhem Drive. If you know me, you know how I feel about supporting local. You also know that I love dad jokes. So it really bugs me when somebody I know calls anyone other than Paul's Termite and Pest Control. This year marks 50 years that Paul's has been servicing our community as a family-owned business. That really means something. All treatment decisions are made right here. Not some corporate headquarters 100 miles away, but right here. Local knowledge means they know exactly when and how to beat certain issues that are unique to our region. All decisions about North Florida made by North Floridians and being local doesn't always mean small. Paul's is the largest locally owned termite, pest, and lawn company in the region. But you'll always get the small town treatment and quick service also. Paul's offers a same day treatment guarantee if you call by noon. If you see something in the morning that's not supposed to be in your house, call Paul's and they'll get them all that same afternoon. It's that easy. For the elimination of termites or any other pests and for a greener lawn too, visit callpauls.com. What's important when shopping at a gun store? Let's start with a friendly and knowledgeable staff. Then add top-notch service, great selection and pricing, and a personal shopping experience only found at a locally owned and operated business. At Red Hills Arms, they're right on target. While other gun stores come and go, Red Hills Arms remains Tallahassee's go-to local gun store for all your firearms needs. Stop by today and get welcomed in my family. Heating and cooling is the job we do. Systems service installation too. Two 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 seven seven two two. Parker Services. Comfort system call away. Hey, it's Jeremy with Parker Services here to tell you about Remy Halo Whole Home Air Purification, which works with your existing HVAC system to reduce bacteria, viruses, mold, odors, and allergens in every cubic inch of air conditioned space in your home. Call to learn more about how this technology can improve your indoor air quality. And hey, if you know your AC has seen better days and it's time to upgrade, we're including a Remy Halo with every new installation through the end of the month. Give us a call or find us online at TallahasseeAC.com. Parker Services, comfort system call away. Florida license number CMC 0503B4. Life is stressful. Dinner shouldn't be. That motto is why Register Sausage has been doing business in the Florida Panhandle and Lower Alabama for over 75 years. A proud sponsor of Seminole Headlines, Register Sausage always provides the best southern smoked sausage to over 140 grocery stores and restaurants throughout the southeast. Headliners have discovered the Register's difference. You can too. To find a store that carries Registers near you or to buy directly, head to RegisterMeats.com. That's RegisterMeats.com. Register Sausage. Yay, sausage! I'll never forget never forget that moment. As long as I live. As long as I live. My first call up ever as a member of the National Guard. When we got to the armory, they briefed us on the wildfires. They were getting dangerously close to homes. Helicopters were going out to drop water on the fires. Guys in the unit were preparing for firefighting with local fire crews. At that moment, I got my first taste of just how important the Guard is to my community. See how the Guard can be an important part of your life at NationalGuard.com. Sponsored by the Florida National Guard. Aired by the Florida Association of Broadcasters and this station. Seminal Headlines returns now. Head to YouTube and search for War Chant TV today to catch the show live or on demand. Now, here's Jeff Cameron, Ira Chauffel, and Corey Clark. Tony loved your all's post-game celebration on YouTube, so don't let the commenters uh, you know, get you down. Those commenters uh, are idiots, Tony. Yeah, yeah. You're the smart one. I wish Corey would have done that when the Braves clinched. My question is, what up? what is up with all of the consistent injuries over the past several years, particularly with the offensive line and quarterback positions? Is it something that can be addressed with the nutrition department or strength and conditioning? 
instead of an hour number two, can you guys pop some bottles with a win over Clemson, UF, or Miami? Yeah. I, I think if they would let us, we'd pop some bottles in here oh, yeah. for a Seminole Headlines edition. Especially – well, all three of those, really. I think Clemson. Any of, all three of them. Yeah. yeah. Any of those. Any of the three, yeah, I think, yeah, is I'll, worthy I'll, of I'm popping in. a bottle. On the, on the injuries, when it comes to the offensive line, one thing, one theory that has been presented to me by somebody uh, who who would have an idea. Other than my fight club theory. That Another they just theory. Have a an alternative. alternative okay. What about theory. my clay theory? Alternative theory. Do you like that theory, though? Yeah. It's a pretty good theory. I don't know if I know it exactly. They're, they're, we don't have the same kind of clay oh, yeah, to mold yeah, yeah, yeah. that the other. No, yeah, well, yeah, there yeah, might be some to that, but this theory is. That because of the position they've been in with not very good offensive linemen for several years, they had to play a bunch of young guys before they were ready, and their bodies aren't physically developed enough. Usually, if you have an offensive lineman that has talent, you want to build them in the weight room two or three years, then get them physically strong enough to deal with 300-pound defensive linemen. But when you're playing Maurice Smith and Darius Washington and Robert Scott, and these guys as freshmen or redshirt freshmen, yeah, they haven't been they're getting though. banged up. So that makes sense. It is, but it doesn't explain DLT and some others that we've had get hurt. Well, he was, I mean, that's a, I mean, that was a, a structural damage. Right. I'm just saying they, they've from. been unlucky in yeah. other ways, too. I mean, they right. just, it's every way imaginable. Yeah. They've had, they've had issues there. It's frustrating, too, because it's the one area where they can't afford to lose anybody. And they, that's the first place they lost somebody. I mean, immediately this year. Was yeah. The first thing that happened. And then I would also say this if you have marginal talent or seriously flawed talent at quarterback, you can't have those guys missing a lot of practices due to injury or for whatever reason. And they both have. We know that. There's no secret there. We're not revealing something we shouldn't. That those two guys have spent a lot of time at various points missing practices. But I also think that that's why last week the fact that Jordan Travis played the entire football game and that that offensive line played the entire football game, especially, especially you know, when Maurice mm -hmm. got into it, it's, it's, that's important. And I think you're going to need that. that to happen Well, you definitely need forward. 13 to figure a out a way to play. He has to stay on the field. Did you? I'm sure you didn't. You should. The story I wrote about the difference between Travis and the other guys that take the snap. No, I, I read Why it. do you assume he didn't read? I don't know. I you just, assumed he didn't busy. watch the press conference. Yeah, yeah, he's too busy. What do you think Jeff does the rest of his day? Yeah. Golfs. I wish. I used to golf yeah. before I took this job. Go feel up co eds and cars. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Um, uh, but they when Jordan Travis plays the majority of the snaps in a football game, they average 34 points a game. When he doesn't, whether it's Blackman, Milton, Rodemaker, Chubba, Anybody else, they average 16 points a game. That's, it. I, I, that's incredible. That's nuts. Because none of us here think he's an All-American. No, he's not real good. But he puts up 34 points per game. They average, yeah. I, I looked it up, and I'm, I'm not a big yards per play guy. Or uh, Yeah, you should be. Points per drive. Okay, I was going to say. Points per drive. Not yards per play, but points per drive. So in the 14 games that he's played, uh, the, the games that he's played the majority of the snaps, they average 2.82 points per drive. Hang with me here, folks. That would be good right now for like 27th in the country. When the other, which is good. I mean, that's 27th in the country. When the other guys take snaps, they average 1.24. Not points, as good. Which is about 109th. Like, yeah. it's it's insanity, well, but I the think difference. The, yeah, and I think the concern is. But that, he can't stay on the field. Well, that, and then also, you know, when you play better competition, how, like, it, where's the upside? Is there going to be an upside to it? Whereas, and I think that was why they were trying to make him into a more complete passer. Because at some point you have to yeah. be able to do something and other than. I mean, yes. I just think it's it's to the point now. It's like you got to figure out a way. No, to I keep agree. Him on That's the what field. I'm saying. Like and, the Jacksonville but, State game is a perfect example of, hey man, get him out there and win yeah, this football you game. Won, you yeah, want to win? You want to win? Go win the game. You would have won by two touchdowns yeah, go, if go, he plays. Go win the game, or make a tackle, or bat somebody down, or be in a normal Still, defense. So, three points in the second half it's, against Jacksonville State is embarrassing, and that was a 53 yard field goal. Whalen writes, gentlemen, great to see a win. This Absolutely. is perfect for our conversation we just had. Those victory sausages were great on Sunday morning. Oh, yeah. At what point in the season do we start to see Purdy? I appreciate what Travis does for this team. We are 1-4, and four, already starting in on the youth movement on the back end of the defense. I'm looking October 23rd, the heavyweight bout with UMass, thinking that may be the spot for him to play. What say you guys? Keep up the great work. It's not a bad idea. I would, I, I, I'd I, like to get him in the I'd game. I'd like I to wouldn't. see him play quite a bit. I, I, because there are some games, I don't care who's playing quarterback, that they can't win. Clemson's one of them. I mean, I, they can't. Uh, win. Clemson's not going to score. Yeah, yeah, they will. Oh, yeah. They'll so, score. I mean, they'll score you, 21. What are they score? 21? Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's a guarantee they're going to score 21. I do know it's a guarantee. All right. Let's, let's prove it. <laughs> well, here's what I know. Florida State is not blocking Clemson in any way, shape, or form. Right. At all. Well, wouldn't you rather have Travis back there if you can't block somebody than anybody else? I in would like somebody who can throw a forward pass accurately. At some point. Well, hey, man. 
Th- hey, this 34 points. Not, I mean, this, just, 34 this points. actually just gets us back into they don't have personnel. And that's great. Travis is the best option. Right. Not a good quarterback. But, uh, you know, I you know is if you judge just by, like, you know, points, he's all right, um, which it seems like what you would judge by. Uh, he has no offensive line to work with and no good receivers. And he and got he, an accurate pass. Right. But he put up 28 against Notre Dame, started a drive that got him to 35, and put up 33 against Syracuse. Like, again, I'm not arguing that he's good. That he's, that, I'm not saying we should start somebody else this year as a, as a way of saying that, like, it's an argument between him and Milton. I'm saying that you got to recruit over him, first sure. of all, easily. Secondly, I mean, at some point you are going to have to play Chubba Purdy just to see, can he play at all? Well, uh, but I don't think it's because you think he's necessarily better than Jordan Travis, but I think it's just you can't count on Jordan Travis ever being healthy. Correct. That's, I mean, those that, are all so – and, and I'd like to see if over time he could be better than Maybe, yeah. And, and I mean, going into next season, you need to know if – What, play? if anything, you have in Or Trevor are you going to have to start A.J. Duffy? Well, no. If Jordan Travis is on the roster, you're starting Jordan Travis until he gets banged up, and then you feel like mm-hmm. feel out who your number two quarterback is. I just told you those numbers, buddy. <laughs> it's it's like – I'm telling you. It's hobby, watching it's, him run around. I'm not going to do it. It's Javi Baez. No, it's Javi not. Javi Baez not. is disgusting to watch. But he, he is a productive Major League Baseball player. hmm how I just told you the numbers. He averages thirty-four <laughs> points per game, two point eight two yards per or, uh, points per drive. Like he's put he. How do you explain it? How what's, do you explain what's his, what's his record? Four and three, and the rest of the guys are zero and seven. I know. And two of the three losses were to Notre Dame. So the only game that he's played the majority of the snaps and played poorly, and they got hammered. Louisville was Louisville yeah. last year. And he was awful. Other, he was awful. Yeah. Um, but other than that, everybody's been awful. It's yeah. not like I don't who, who would get this thing humming. Mahomes. AJ Duffy might, maybe, might, maybe. That's might. what I'm saying. I'm, I'm ready to give. I'm not. I'm, I'm not ready. ready. I mean, I'm again, like, he just yeah. put up 33 and got and had a winning. Nobody else on that roster gets them to the 15 yard line. Clemson scored more than 19 points in regulation. <laughs> I was wondering if we're just time. texting people. One time this season, they've scored more than 19 in regulation. But you're guaranteeing they're going to well, score 21. Well, how about we clarify? Let's define our terms before we I have said the 20. Bet. By the way, I said let's, 20. First of all, let's define our terms. Because I think Clemson's going to get one or two defensive scores. I was going to say, what about a six? Does that count? Possible. We're going to. Add some points up for Clemson on the defense. I would end. not play Chuba against that team. Not if you're trying to build confidence. Well, you know that's I mean? why he wants to play him against you yeah, guys. Yeah, but I wouldn't start him. I think Jordan yeah. Travis is your quarterback until he's not your quarterback. But Chuba should get some. This reps, is what ha- this is the kind of only if you've got the game in control. Yes, you're not. Yeah. I mean, it's still. I mean, you should beat UMass by 35 yeah, points. Man. But should it be Jackson? Yeah, State? exactly. You've got to win that uh, game and then let Chuba Purdy get some. I would. I would argue snaps. that Jacksonville State would beat UMass by three touchdowns minimum. So I do think I mean there's what no, would Kennesaw State do? Kennesaw State I mean, would destroy Wapel. Well, Bell. they do what everybody else does to UMass. Have you looked at those scores? No, they're terrible. Yeah, I they're, mean, it's, it's not rough. even it's it's insane. All right, I see what this is. What ends up happening though, when we when you have limited personnel, you're you're arguing about they're all negatives. They're all negatives. So it's like you're like okay, this is the best of the sorry. Yeah, and that's what we end up doing. I mean, there's just and and. To me, it's going to be irrelevant in certain games. The Florida game, if Florida's still playing hard and cares at all, their their talent is such that it wouldn't matter if Jordan Travis starts, Trevor Purdy starts, you start, I right. start. Doesn't make any difference. They're going to get blown out. And Clemson's that way too because their defensive line will literally manhandle. Well, they keep getting hurt, so maybe they're yeah, all in their second, third okay. team by then. They've had actually worse injuries than uh, Florida State, I think. That's tragic to hear. <laughs> I know, Some headlines: right. ninety-three-three Real Talk Radio and War Chant TV continues in a moment. Your local news now. A new poll shows that if a presidential primary were to be held now, Governor Ron DeSantis and former President Donald Trump would be virtually tied. However, the governor and former president have downplayed the prospect of a DeSantis presidential run in 2024 in recent days. Both Agriculture Commissioner Nikki Freed and Congressman Charlie Crist have repeatedly suggested if Governor DeSantis were to win re-election, he'd resign and run for president in 2024. Appearing on Fox News last Thursday, DeSantis said his focus is on Florida. Another idea that has been floated is the prospect of a Trump-DeSantis ticket in 2024. School districts are warning parents about a new TikTok challenge presented to students. The Slap a Teacher Challenge is making the rounds and has many school districts on high alert. The latest challenge encourages students to slap a teacher or staff member and run before being caught committing the assault. Any student who physically assaults a staff member will be held responsible both legally and by board policy. This is Rachel and A with your World Talk 93.3 Local News Update. Brought to you by Macklemore Systems, Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at macklemoresystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Frombley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. Scattered thunderstorms likely this afternoon, otherwise overcast skies. 
High temperatures reach up to 79. Easterly winds, 5 to 10 miles per hour. Isolated thunderstorms likely. Tonight, lows around 71. Cloudy skies expected. Scattered thunderstorms likely. Tomorrow, high temperatures reach up to 81. Overcast skies. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Right now, 73. See Nice Tire and Auto Service at 4792 Bluntstown Highway today. The ASC trained technicians at Nice take the guesswork out of fixing your car. That's why wherever you see the Goodyear sign, you'll find what you want in tires and service. From preventative maintenance to a major overhaul and everything in between, you name it. Plus, Nice's services are backed by a nationwide limited warranty. Stop by Nice Tire and Auto Service. 4792 Bloodstown Highway, just west of Capitol Circle. Life is stressful. Dinner shouldn't be. That motto is why Register Sausage has been doing business in the Florida Panhandle and Lower Alabama for over 75 years. A proud sponsor of Seminole Headlines, Register Sausage always provides the best southern smoked sausage to over 140 grocery stores and restaurants throughout the southeast. Headliners have discovered the Register's difference. You can, too. To find a store that carries Registers near you or to buy directly, head to RegisterMeats.com. That's RegisterMeats.com. Register Sausage. Yay, sausage! Here's what you missed on the Greg Tish Show. I bought this really nice pair of sunglasses. Anytime you look at your sunglasses and think, man, I'm doing good. I've had these a long time. Mm -hmm. Gone. <laughs> Cheap sunglasses, you'll have them forever. But why does that happen? I'll do you one better. I had a really nice pair of Oakley razors. Accidentally got knocked off of my head by my wife, and then she stomped on me. I would do that too with the razors. <laughs> with anything Oakley. <laughs> the Greg Tish Show, Monday through Friday, 6 to 9 a.m., only on Real Talk 93.3. Seminole Headlines is brought to you by Register Sausage, serving the Florida Panhandle and Lower Alabama for over 75 years. To find a store near you or to buy directly from Registers, head to RegisterMeats.com. That's RegisterMeats.com. Seminole Headlines returns now. Head to YouTube and search for War Chant TV today to catch the show live or on demand. Now, here's Jeff Cameron, Ira Chauffel, and Corey Clark. Good day, gents. Which number is higher, right, Spencer? This one's for you, Corey. Mm. Atlanta Braves playoff victories or Florida State football wins? Ooh. That's going to be Braves victories, my friend. You think so? You think they got some from the Brewers? I think they're going to win at least two games. You think Florida State's tapping out at two this year? Uh, three is going to be hard to get to. I'm, I'm going to say, um, yeah, because the, the Braves are going to win it all. So what is that? That's Ooh, three, seven. All kinds that's of 11 wins. straight. That's uh, 11 games. Just Florida State's not doing that. can't even get there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mike writes, do y'all think that Kenny Dillingham ever dreams about being able to start on the 25 yard line? <laughs> so I wanted to talk about that real quick. Like I get that people want to ask, why don't you fair catch? But I like Papuchas's response. It's like, we don't want to teach that. We don't want to teach that. We're just giving up. I like, do. I know you do, but with this team and this personnel, I do, but that's not, I want to like, teach. Let's give ourselves the best chance to succeed. Hey, you're talking about a two yard difference on average. No, if I'm watching a guy tiptoe to the 15, <laughs> well, that's I'm how, not doing those that. Days <laughs> <laughs> He's not the returner anymore. But as Papucha said, on average, when they bring it out, they start at the 23, which is terrible. But it's two yards difference from where they start out. But his point was, we don't want to build a program by just conceding we can't do something. We're trying to build a program, and you do that by working at it and getting better at it and seeing it work on Saturdays. Like, we wouldn't do that on offense. You know, he didn't say this, but he's like, we're not just going to punt on third down when it's third and 14, well, although they should. There are times. <laughs> but they're not going to yeah. do it. So I like that response. I'm like, yeah. And as soon as... As soon as my man Jakai busts one this week for 96. Let's go. Sideways, like back and forth. Big road win. Big, 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 people teams. are going to be like, thank God he didn't take a he didn't fair catch that one. Uh, since Corey doused himself in champagne after one win, how many wins this season for Ira to do te uh, tequila shots after the game? Hmm. Man, I think it should be the same thing. It should be if they beat any if of those three. If they beat North three. Carolina, let's do a tequila shot together on camera. We'll uh, do it. Let's, let's do, do it. it. Yeah. Okay. We live around the corner yeah. from each other, so we, we can do that. Is yeah. Aslan always going to buy the drinks? Yeah, yeah, that's. I think y'all should go to a bar and just start see what happens. We'll film you <laughs> off to the side. John writes, "Rock solid question for that ass. Given the state of the program, who would we have to beat for it to be acceptable for our fans to storm the field after the win? Nobody, ever. I agree. Unless Not ever, we, you we, mean we, just this we were season. hosting. Let's say we were hosting like Alabama in two years and we won that game. I might storm the field. Well, given if, the state of the program currently, yes, they're not. Are they hosting Alabama? Is, it, yeah. is that happening? They, is that a home yeah, at home? That is Some a home. Yeah. Got to get it together before then, Corey. <laughs> <laughs> watch, We're going to need to get it together. Watch before BC then. and NC State uh, play uh, Gardner Webb. 
yeah. in Buffalo, in Akron, all these games. And Florida State's like, why don't we just take on Alabama? Richard, you're not mad at Coach Atkins. I'm going to answer this preemptively here before I read it. You're mad at the players. Trust me on this. Uh, Atkins works miracles with angles to get guys to be able to run the ball successfully at all. Within they ran off. for 250. I know they did, and that's why I'm preemptively answering Richard's question. He says, you guys praise Coach Atkins all the time, but I've seen a three-man rush get pressure too many well, times. Look. Is he coming back for 2022? Oh, God, yes. He's the best coach on the team. Yeah. They might make him head coach. He's uh yeah no I mean th that situation is not good no, but you had two things working against you in that situation one was Mackenzie Milton not being able to run the way he normally is and then Robert Scott was coming back from injury wasn't right and missed the blocks but, well they've they've missed a few on three man pressures they've missed a few where they have more than they have to block and they just they're not good and there some of them are hurt most of them are hurt that's a big problem too I mean if the guys you're rolling out there are young and hurt they're playing problematic but they're hurt yeah you know, Robert themselves. Scott is clearly not yeah. himself and he, I don't know that he was good to begin with he may eventually be uh, I know they, he's, they a red, have, he's basically yeah, a redshirt freshman that's yeah. what I mean I'm yeah. saying he may eventually yeah. be good but so he's been hurt and he's young uh they haven't had Marie Smith out there until this week and even yeah. he's playing hurt uh they've had really Dylan Gibbons is hurt Devontae Taylor's hurt I mean oh, yeah. literally all of Darius might be the only one that's healthy yeah and that was a great block at the end of the game, yeah. Darius. Well done, man. That is what you do. We're trying to win games around here. Make them call it. And again, when you make a block like that and then throw your hands up like this, yeah. it clearly it means you didn't do anything wrong. You didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, You're yeah. telling the guy, I didn't touch him. If you, did, if you did something wrong, Darius would have been like, hey, hey man, <laughs> yeah, my bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but if you do this, like the in the Jordan documentary, the guy rolling dice, <laughs> I will. But he, yeah, I he will went like this. You, he didn't have it. I will tell you when you go back and watch that on replay, it's not as egregious as it first looked. Yeah, right. and he's, he's getting, he, and he's he's getting, getting the hand, he's getting the hand of the face. So it's, the ref's probably like, well, yeah, we're, both of you giving each other the business. <laughs> you guys are giving fun. each other the business. All right, it's just but how, how many for times, once an ACC ref just uh, let men be men. Think about that. Like if he calls that hold. Oh, you're going course. overtime. I mean, then then you're you gonna got, lose in overtime. You're still kind of in field goal range, uh, uh, very at the edge of it. But then you're at midfield, and you're, that's the end of the game. Yeah, it was. Those refs didn't want to watch any more of that. Yeah, like, 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 that's go. a good block. <laughs> block. Make, no, a tackle. Move chains. Make a tackle. Hey, move the chains. Move the chains. Yeah, I mean, credit doing? credit to Fitz Dog for coming through right there. Those aren't automatic. That was a, that was a big kick for him. Uh, and Norvell. So uh, I don't want to do that one. Like, go back to Twitter. I did. I just mm -hmm. did. Yeah, that's why he didn't want to do Which it. Which matchup another... do you feel better about, Clemson or Florida? That's the Twitter question for you. I mean, it's got to be Clemson, oddly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I, if Florida's engaged, I mean, again, we don't know. That could turn into a mess. It could. Uh, so I, I would think Clemson. You just think it would enough. be a little more low scoring because they haven't exactly erupted on anyone. Yeah. So Florida put up 28 on Bama. Um, and, and, when that the other kid is playing there, they could be pretty dynamic. So they had like how many false starts did they have? Well, I don't know. I didn't watch that game. Who, Florida? Apparently, yeah. Yeah. They had, apparently they're like oh, they had like eight 16, false starts. I know they had something. sixteen penalties. Apparently oh. they had a ton of false starts. Well, it's Lexington, man. At night. Are you kidding? Preston wants to know when we go out for dinner for a peaceful family dinner at Horizons and get bombarded by co eds as we do. Mm -hmm. And they <laughs> want to take pictures and dance. Right. Yeah. How right. do we handle it? Drag to, us to the, next, yeah, to the bar that's yeah, next door. Yeah. How do we handle it? How do you handle that, Corey? I usually go because I don't want to be rude. You know that. I yeah. don't want to be well, rude. Well, that's what Urban said. You can't yeah. be rude in that situation. But if but if the 21-year-old is grinding on you like an Urban situation. Out of he, nowhere. Like, uh, there well, were no right. indicators that that could happen. Um, <laughs> yes, that would be. Urban uh, probably didn't want to be rude. So you like, you well, might not want to be if rude. You, if you must grind. Well, no, I would say, look, uh, I'm I'm. I have a wonderful girlfriend that I'm in love well, with. So this was a good example and for you. And she's right not here. Married. She's standing right here. So yeah. get off me. Yeah. yeah. Get off me, woman. Yeah. It's not so much that what you're doing is wrong, but she's right here. Yeah. She's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> have some spatial awareness. Yeah. Look around the place. Yeah. Uh, like Urban clearly didn't. I like, still love the fact. You his... think he turned around? He never thought once, like, why is that guy? Why is this? Is why is he taking a pit? What's he and doing with his camera? Yeah, I know. Oh, well, the whole bar was filming him. Yeah. He was the center of attention, like the clown that he is. Yeah. They were laughing at him. Well, hey. It's good. Good night. Good night for old Urban. The way I handle it is I politely decline. I think that's what you, you know mean. what Jimbo should have done. I Jimbo. am politely declined. <laughs> Get away from me. Yeah. Crazy whore. <laughs> hey. You said you impolitely. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah. When, when, Jimbo, <laughs> when Jimbo got here, when Jimbo got here and was the OC. And he could tell right off the bat, he talked about it. When he looked at Florida's sideline, 
He looked at Florida State sideline when he first got here and said, well, this is going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. Look at their guys and our guys. He couldn't have planted something like that right then like and help Coach Bowden out. He could yeah. have created a situation to put Urban. Yeah. And the, I think Jimbo he, wanted he to probably, get the head job. He also uh, I don't he think was, was looking to help Coach Bowden out that much. <laughs> well, I think I, I think he was, but I also think that he didn't think Urban was that low down and ignorant oh. to fall for it. Wow. Well, he was wrong. He was wrong. Yeah, obviously. Tough decade for Urban with a, with a chant national championship sprinkled in there. Yeah, nobody ever doubted his ability to walk into a place loaded with talent and win. Would you take him tomorrow? No, I know. Because sometimes this situation Iris like said that, he quit the business if Urban Meyer was the Florida State. It would be, yeah, I, it would be impossible. Whenever a celebrity gets into a situation like that, you kind of wonder: Did somebody set him up? Is there something at play? Yeah, but who would set up a winless Jacksonville Jaguars? It's like coach? Occam's Razor, right? With the the most What's rational, logical? Like, yeah. the logical explanation. It's like Urban's just an idiot doing an idiot thing, probably drunk, like you said. And uh, well, there's no that's probably what about yeah. it. The, the stills of yeah. the front. Oh, was it? Of him yeah. faced on. Hey, man, he was out with his grandkids. That part nobody would have cared about. Right. Famous people get hammered all the time. That's yeah. not, nobody cares about that. It's the whole grabbing her ass while she's dancing on you. Yeah. And then just lying about it afterwards and telling everybody that you just took some pictures. Yeah. People are trying to get me on the dance floor. To. Yeah. And then you have to be smarter. How does, again, he doesn't have friends because if he did, somebody would be like, hey, yo, man. Other people took pictures. This is not going to be good for you. Like I would do with you. you we got to like get out Jeff, of here. Come on, man. Oh, we got to come on. We got to ride. Too famous. We got to go. Big a name. We got to go. You're too big Time a name. To ride. Some of the headlines. 93.3 Real Talk Radio War Chat TV continues. There's fun to be had every night at the Corner Pocket. Take home prizes on Trivia Tuesdays and Beer Bingo Thursdays. And kickstart your weekend with Martini Fridays. Plus, happy hour runs every weekday and game day specials every time the Knolls take the field. Watch all the best games at the Corner Pocket's Vegas Wall. Featuring 560 inches of flat screen TV heaven. Oh, really? The best food, the best drinks, and the best place to watch all the games. Tallahassee loves the Corner Pocket. Hi, this is Rowdy Lawson from Lawson & Lawson Electric. Let's talk about your 2021 hurricane preparedness plan. Are you prepared? Do you have a plan for when the power goes out? A Cummins Home Standby Generator is more affordable than you think. At Lawson & Lawson Electric, we can help you with your home and your business. There's no job too big or too small. We stand by every job we do and consider it a privilege to be recognized as the best in Tallahassee. Give us a call at 562-4111 or online at LL electrical.com if you weren't the owner of gordo's and all those wonderful restaurants eddie what would you be doing you know i i think i'd want to be a want to be i don't know what i'd want to be a boat captain or a cowboy you know how to use a, a lasso no you'd have to do that if you were a cowboy yeah but i've never even been on a horse it's not my place to be on a horse i agree and the horse thanks you. Gordo's, bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. If you're worried about your hard-earned dollars becoming worthless or your 401k or IRA losing value, now is the time to move into gold. No, not gold or silver stocks, but real gold and silver you can actually hold in your hands. How do you get real gold and silver? By calling Oxford Gold today at 833-600-GOLD. The Oxford Gold Group will teach you everything you need to know about owning real gold and silver. It's a lot easier than you think. Call the Oxford Gold Group right now at 833-600-GOLD to get your free gold and silver investment guide. Put your savings and retirement accounts into something real, like gold and silver. Get your free Oxford Gold Group investment guide today and learn how easy it is to have real gold and silver delivered to your home or how you can have real gold and silver in your retirement account. Don't sit back and watch your savings and retirement accounts suffer. Now is the time to make your money work as hard for you as you did for your money. So do this. Call the Oxford Gold Group right now, today. 833-600-GOLD. That's 833-600-G-O-L-D. Many orthodontists in Tallahassee can straighten a smile, but at Birch Orthodontics, they're dedicated to providing the finest care possible. The experienced and friendly staff is trained in all of the latest techniques. So whether you need standard treatment like braces or Invisalign, or you have a more complicated case requiring extra attention, Birch Orthodontics is here for you. Set up your free consultation today by visiting birchorthodontics.com, B-U-R-C-H orthodontics.com, or call 850-877-1692. At Birch Orthodontics, they create beautiful smiles that last a lifetime. Seminal Headlines returns now. Head to YouTube and search for War Chant TV today to catch the show live or on demand. Now, here's Jeff Cameron, Ira Chofel, and Corey Clark. Hooray for the win! For the past several seasons, writes Eric, it's been frustrating to watch our offense attempt to run a screen pass. 
are always blown up for losses or minimal gains, although the drop although the dropped backwards version that ended with a scoop and score for the part for parchment was an interesting twist. I checked the rule book and it does not explicitly prohibit this idea, which is why I propose this as a possible solution. When we line up trips to the outside, wouldn't it be better to swap out two of the receivers with a pair of Ford F-150 <laughs> provide a bit more blocking power so we can get more than a yard and a half on a screen pass. As always, you boys keep, keep on keeping on hashtag. Rock ass. Is, you'd is have to put a, a uniform on them. Yeah. I wonder if there, I don't think there is a rule. I mean, maybe not because there, that's not a, a sentient being, a truck. But what if you got like a bull? I also don't know if there's anything in the rule book about bringing weapons on the field. Oh, there definitely is. They didn't think about this back in the day. They didn't think yeah. that a, a, a gun would be like in Last Boy Scout. They didn't think somebody might just shoot you. Or nunchucks. Or nunchucks. That's something you don't, you don't hear that word a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Numchucks? Yeah. Or, he said none. Is it none or numb? It's numb. Who knows? Uh, I way. thought it was nunchucks too. Numchucks. It doesn't matter. I know how to use them. No, I'm talking about. Yeah, that. I don't know how to pronounce them. I can't use them. Yeah, I was great. Remember when you were a little kid? Everybody wanted to oh, try to use yeah. them. You hit yourself in the I nose. See, I hit myself yeah. in the face one time. Yeah. And I went, that's enough. Of that's, that's why. That's a weapon. It hurts. I'm not doing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I never cared about Chinese stars either. Yeah, yeah. throwing they're, stars. They're throwing stars now. Oh, they're not called Chinese stars. Yeah, throwing. I thought they originated from China. I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean that's what I thought they were. Oh no, they call them throwing stars now. If you want to Are be racist, sure you can that? call them Chinese uh, stars. Why would that be racist? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this Italian food, sir, it's pasta. Trust me, the first time, <laughs> the first time I was told about the first time I was told about crisscross right, applesauce, oh, I'm like, on. what in the there world we, is this? There we go. Here I didn't go. know. I didn't know that was a thing. Michael writes, "Hey, Ira, bet you got excited. Facebook went down." So that way Jeff would get the answers on yes. the Twitter oh, questions. But right. last Facebook, Facebook is still alive. Mm -hmm. With the way Clemson's offense has been going, it, we slightly improve our offensive and defensive performances. I think it's actually possible we can win. Mm. But say we do win. Okay. Years from now, you'll tell your son in the Uncle Jeff voice, son, that was a glorious year. We beat Clemson. Finally, and son, we also lost to Jacksonville State. Dad, what's J State? There's no state that begins with J. I know, son. Mm. I know. You just won't even tell him about Jacksonville State. You Doesn't just talk about the win. Or you say it as like one of the great uh, comeback stories of all time. You're so bad, you lose to Jacksonville State, and then you beat the, what, six-time reigning conference champions two months later. I do think we're short-selling this win from the standpoint of the fact, yes, I know Syracuse isn't great, mm -mm. and I know Florida State isn't great. No. But the fact that they did, after losing four straight games, including – Three basically, well, two in the last play, and another one that was kind of yeah, three in the last minute. Yeah, to win a game like that, I mean, it's it's a good step. Well, it's like you you would say we started with the season like they're going to be a lot of coin toss games, mm -hmm. wouldn't you say? They played four coin toss games. They lost yeah. three of the four coin tosses. So, baby, they're due. The next two close <laughs> going games, on a run here. Their next two close games, they're winning. That's how odds work, right? Oh, it's a coin toss. It's a man. fifty fifty chance. Not always though. You could lose nine. Yeah, straight, you could lose. I've done it. Yeah, blackjack supposed to be fifty fifty. I've, I've lost eleven hands in a row. It's, it's brutal when that happens. Uh, looking again here, let's see. Um, of the remaining games, which which ones are you going to class? I want your definition of coin toss, Corey. Okay. Uh, North Carolina. No, not a coin toss game. UMass. Yeah, not, no. not a coin toss game. Okay, now we get into the real, right? Yeah. Clemson, not a coin toss game. Nope. NC State, yep. not a coin toss mm, yeah, game. No, no. Nah, right, so what's the spread going to be? They're better than we thought. They sure, were. but what's the spread? Better. I mean, they beat Louisiana Tech 34 to 27. They're a lot. I, no. I mean, I, let's do cartwheels about that. It's not a that. coin toss game. But right. But it will come down to, I think, it will come down if to it, the fourth quarter. If it does, if it come, if it ends up They've being in either way, then happens. Florida State's gotten a lot better, I think. Because NC State's a lot better. Than Actually, NC State's pretty good. I mean, I guess they beat that Clemson team. Is that what we're excited about? Well, yeah, I mean they did. They did. But right, but they they, they beat did. Louisiana Tech by seven. They got they barely, almost destroyed by Mississippi State. They get almost destroyed. They got beat by Mississippi State. But they scored. They didn't score until the fourth quarter of that game. Like they're 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 good. They're better than Florida State. Yeah. But they're not going to come in here as a fourteen point favorite. That's not going to be an incredible. They're not upset. coming into this stadium. No. They're, but and they, think they're who are you out trying to win? fire up? I'm telling you, they're going to come in here by close to double digit favorites. Nine, something like that. No 10. chance. No chance. Are you crazy? No chance. Are you watching Florida State football? I watch these lines, son. And, I watch these lines. Okay. Florida State was somehow right. favored this last week. Yes, because they're – I mean, because Syracuse sucks. And understand, they're going to be coming off that UMass win, <laughs> right? So they got a little more confidence no, built in. No, when they play NC State, they'll be coming off a loss to Clemson. Oh, that hurts. That's a little stinger. Let's see how that Clemson game uh, goes. Let's, let's. But, uh, it, but 
All right, <clears throat> and I but I think that's a game. I I can't imagine both of y'all think that game is going to be a blowout. And NC State's going to be up I, by I think three it's be a blowout, but I would not. I think Florida State would have to. A lot of things would have to go right. I think, I think Florida State will lose. NC State's got a good defense. Mm, cool. We're trying to sell a show, I, uh, just, Jeff. We're I, trying to I, get I, people I, interested in this pro in this the, product. The show sells the show, <laughs> man. People are long gone if the only thing they cared about is Florida State football. That was a while ago, baby. <laughs> no, that no, ship sailed. I'm ages trying ago. to sell some hope. I'm trying to sell some hope. Right? I know. I know. I know. They're going to be in any of these games. Be a realist here. Miami might very well be a coin toss oh, game because they look like they have called it a day. Yeah. And they stink. Yeah. Boston College is not a coin flip game. Not on the road. Nope. Again, a coin flip. That that, nope. that implies that I think it's going to be a pick'em game. I don't. I think Boston College is favored by 8 to 10, 12 Thank points, you. somewhere in that. Thank but you. I also think it's going to be a close game in the fourth quarter. And that's what I mean. You, if you play certain situations and well, Florida's not a coin flip game. Either. If you play certain situations well against NC State and Boston College and Miami, those games will come down to the final few minutes of those games. I think. And if you do that, you got a chance. That's what I mean well, by they a coin have a chance flip. in any of those games. Like you know, you make a play. You know, I, Jacksonville State shouldn't have been a coin toss game, but you know, the the Louisville game came down to the final flipping play almost. Yeah, not as many <clears> coin flip <throat> games in this part of the schedule is my point. Right, the first half of the schedule are these areas where you could have won. I mean, we know we we said just because it was the first game of the year, caught Notre Dame early, could be a coin flip game. Played out like that. Obviously, nobody expected us to lose to Jacksonville State. That wasn't a coin flip game, by the way. Florida right. State was huge favorites as they should have been. Wake was a coin flip game. They got blown out, turned it over six times. Louisville was a coin flip game. They lost thirty one twenty three, and that first quarter was the yeah. damning element of that game. Uh, this was a relative coin flip game. Florida State was favored by what four and a half going into the game. Uh, beat Syracuse by three. Yeah, I but think, when you think about it that way, yeah. honestly, Florida State's really played, I think, two bad halves of football. I think the first half against Wake and the first half against Louisville. 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 Really, the only two bad. I mean, that's not well, good. The, la the second half, the Jacksonville State was an abomination. You scored three points, man. Yeah, on a fifty. But, what, but you goal. didn't just lay that. You know, you didn't give up. I guess. All right. Yeah, you got it. both sides count. Yeah, no, <laughs> fair. <laughs> Screw that! <laughs> Screw that game! I, I'm still, I'm never going to get over that game. I you ask, think. you will. I don't know. When, when, that when, all hey, the time. when we'll Norvell's ripping it. off four straight ten win seasons, and we're, we're talking about firing him. <laughs> we're talking about firing him. After I'll get over the, the fourth consecutive I'll be like, win season three again. Same guy that lost you know to Jacksonville State. You know what's going to happen is that the kicker will be that, and I'll win you over. We'll yeah. be sitting there arguing. He's like, I don't know. You just can't do it, Jeff. And I go, he lost to Jacksonville State. You're like, get rid of That's it. That's still unforgivable. I'm tired of that. I'm done with it. Damn it! Nine years of this. <laughs> but I, but look, I do think there is some to Iris' point. There can be some confidence gain from playing the last five minutes of a close there game. There can well. be, and and the matchups matter. I mean, like this game against North Carolina. If you wreak havoc, like we started the show with, and I think there's a good chance you will, because I really like this front four. Yeah. Now they're now down a starter, which or a co-starter. Yeah. It's not a, it's not good. You lose in depth. You get worn down. But yeah, that's it, big because that's your strength. Yeah, I mean, that team. is your yeah. strength of your team. And if, if but if you can dominate up front, and this game is close in the third quarter. Yeah, I think the heavily favored North Carolina team that, for whatever reason, Mac Brown has never been able to find a way to get past Florida State. Yeah, and and North Carolina is not feeling real good about itself right now. Maybe just maybe some weirdness occurs because you put game pressure on people. Things yeah. happen. Maybe I think it's unlikely that Florida State is able to do enough offensively to give themselves that chance in the fourth quarter. But defensively, I think you know maybe maybe scoop and score, maybe something like that. I, pick six like that. And I think when you look at the remaining schedule, we we put UMass down as a win, but the other three remaining games that I think are the most winnable are the three we talked about. I think at BC is winnable. It's not, it's certainly they're not going to be favored. You, Especially and, lost, BC lost their quarterback. So yeah, and, and they run more. the ball. Yeah. And you, if you, if yeah. Jermaine Johnson is yeah. still playing and all these guys up front are still playing, you have, it's, it's an okay matchup. NC State at home and Miami at home. Those are the three games where if you play well and play uh, specifically the fourth quarter well in a close game, you can win those games. The other three I mean, at, at Carolina, at Clemson, at Florida, that's going to be rough. Corey's got him at five and seven. You heard five and not. seven. I you like, can go to a bowl at five and seven right now. Isn't that the rule? If you can, so it's, it's a possibility. Yeah, I like your winners. optimism. That BC team, even having lost their quarterback, just lost nineteen to thirteen on the road at Clemson. They have beaten, can't even snap the ball. Can't even snap the ball. But they, they, they. Prior to that, of course, were undefeated. Had the win against Missouri, and then. Three easy wins. Yeah, um, Missouri. Missouri. Missouri yeah. We're, we're going to see now what uh, what they are because they're playing the NC State team that I, Ira and I think are really good. Now they're on a bye this week, so we won't find out. But next week, NC State, Boston College, October the sixteenth. It's a showdown. You think there's a chance that it could be Wake and Pitt in the ACC championship game? Please help us. I mean, a pretty good chance, right? Like it's Wake, starting to feel that way. I don't know where Wake plays Clemson. But you got to figure Wake's going to put up seventeen to nineteen points on that defense, would, even as I mean, good as that defense is. 
I would not I would not bet on Clemson to win that game, especially yeah. if they're favored by a couple points. Wouldn't it be funny to watch Clemson like have a five loss season? Well, they they would have it would have helped if Boston College could have caught that snap. Uh, I think they were going to win that game. They, Clemson was petrified, uh, and the Venables kid had just dropped an interception. And, it's just going to be interesting to watch. We always watch closely because we know that sustaining dynasties is very difficult. You know, we've, and, we've seen and it up what, close, what, yeah. what Nick Saban has done in Alabama is nothing short of remarkable. It's why he'll go down as the greatest yeah. of all time, especially in the modern era. I think it's even more difficult to do than when you had 190 scholarships that were all yours and you could do anything you wanted like the Bear did. Um, but but I, I've wondered about Clemson for a long time because of what he sells. And I thought, okay, let something – get shaky there just even for a moment because i've wondered if deep down they all know he's a clown <laughs> he has hired great coordinators who's they all like the, clemson fans the fa- oh i think the fans are all aboard the Dabo train i think it's more about I the administration the and, media. and media the coach yeah, yeah i think it's the coaches and the players that you got to worry about more than the fans the yeah. fans will stick with Dabo. i mean danny ford is still a legend there yeah he cheated to high heaven <laughs> yeah, yeah and he yeah, won a yeah. championship 40 years ago and he's still a but legend they got there. a glimpse of the guy that was the clown before he hired great assistants they, well, he was right. almost fired. He and was the, that close. And yeah. the key with all of this is how do they, ha- how do those coaches handle the situation when it starts to crack? Right. Because that's the thing with Jimbo, and that's what's going to be funny to watch the love affair in Texas A&M because the media there have he has been so sweet to them, and they've been so sweet to him. Yeah. Once they have to start asking tougher questions, then he has to respond to that. Then you start dealing with you all start of seeing it. Just the becomes personality. a different situation. Yeah, it becomes a different. What's situation. the spread in that one this weekend? The A and M Alabama game. That's crazy. He has to play Alabama. I was like, okay, well, it's a two game losing streak, but maybe they're playing Vanderbilt or something. Should nope, I'll look it up by uh, Corey. While Jeff asks another question, I'm not asking another question. That's music. Good work oh. out of you. Good work out of you. Love you guys. Thank you. You're the Matthew, best. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, all of you. Be well, everybody. We'll talk to you again next week.